a man who's watched a ton of boxing videos and zero unboxing videos. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but you got a mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Jody Miller? Oh, my God. I do love that about me. And Ball Brian. Who wants free drugs? Jody <laughs> uh, recently lost a cat. I did. Oh, and, did. Uh, Is that our start off the show? Yeah, let's bring it down. That was uh, probably the lowest point in my life many years ago. You lost a cat? I How long ago was my it? Cat. It was a scant 37 and a half years ago. Okay, but well, how long How long have you, did you have that cat? That cat's name was Kitty. So, I, such a good name. Story checks out. I love that cat. Uh, picked it out of a box and a litter back when, you know, back when you'd be in the neighborhood and yes. someone would go, there's a box of cats. Kittens, yes. Free cats. Is they that, used to do that at the supermarket. Did you ever like walk up and they would just have a box of cats yeah. and your mom would be like, let's just get detergent. <laughs> You know, uh, I, you know, you talk <laughs> about like an impulse buy. <laughs> like normally I have to sit there and wrestle over, should I get the smoked turkey or the regular turkey? But this is Sausalito I, turkey. I, I will pick up a creature and raise it for the next 13 to to, to, <laughs> not, to 27 years. Oh, my God. It's such an impulse buy. It is. Just, I'll just, and I'll take that small tabby right to the right. Um, this was a neighborhood box, uh, though. This wasn't the supermarket. Market box. It's totally oh, like, different. Like those little free libraries. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. They put them out. Take a book, yeah. put, put them a book, out right. The street. And we found out, and we went over there, and it was me and my sister and my mom. And mm-hmm. and it was like, I wanted this one cat that was like a tiger stripe cat because, yeah. you know, I was 10 and my sister wanted this other calico cat. Yeah. And then there was this one that was just kind of this beautiful, but sort of gray, black gray cat. And, uh, we went, all right, we'll compromise. You know, my mom said, we'll get, right. we'll get the other cat. You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting compromise. Neither <laughs> one is. of you is going to yeah. get what you want. We'll get right. We're going to get this one. one. We'll Meanwhile, that poor cat want. was like, I'm the third choice. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just like, fuck, they wanted this one. They wanted this. Like, all right. It was like, <laughs> we're going to get a six foot sub tonight for dinner. <laughs> I want ham. My sister wants roast beef. And my mom goes, we're going with head cheese <laughs> because we got to compromise. That's right. You both have to be miserable. So we got this cat, and uh, we had this other runaway cat named Norman, who just kind of entered right. into our house at some point, started hanging out. And Norman used to be our primary cat, and then Norman turned immediately, hated everyone. He, right. he growled at everyone. He, he hated this new cat. The new cat was fun, mm-hmm. smart. The cat knew its name. I used to I used to jump the fence at Colfax Elementary and play basketball. <laughs> the cat would walk out from oh, wow. my house, was next door, and start meowing and then stand by the fence and look wow. at me and meow. That's great. And Aww. I'd go, Come on, kitty, come on. And the cat would climb the fence, just put the little paws in the holes, go over the top, and jump down, follow me around. Uh later on I moved out in my dad's garage. I took the cat with me, then the cat got sick, and then I put the cat down. Yeah. But it was really, I don't know, is is putting cats down. That's what I had to do. Yeah, it's a really hard decision. But is it a lot like relationships? I I have found. Have you put a lot of women down? <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I, no, I we need to like check and see if there are any dead exes of Adams that mysteriously I, were just put down. They were in a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. You never want to see someone suffer. That's we're, a good way to look at it. Place. So. No, in a relationship, I mean, you guys tell me, you tell me, everyone gets caught up in the relationship. Like, I'm, oh, I'm heartbroken or I'm um, now in a depression or mm-hmm. funk because right. this relationship has ended. Right. I always argue it has more to do with where you're at at the time. Fuck mm-hmm. yeah. So when you, you know, when my first girlfriend dumped me and I was driving a pickup truck and I work construction with a bunch of illegals and racists and it's an interesting dance, <laughs> <laughs> nice balancing act on the construction side, five racists named Mike and then 26 illegals. But, <laughs> but I found, I realized that it was my life that was so bad and that the relationship was all I had to look forward to. And right. now that was gone later on in life. You notice celebrity dudes, when they get broken up with, seem to bounce back pretty quick. 
They don't yes. go into uh-huh. these dark funks. The women for, too. Yeah, yeah women too. Absolutely. Because okay, you're depressed. On the other hand, people are hitting on you yeah. constantly, and you're going out to Nobu tomorrow night with yeah. the Kardashians, and, and you're getting on a private jet, and all of a sudden, yeah. your life's pretty good. You're not quite as depressed. Exactly. You may mourn the relationship some, but it does, it's not your entire being. Yes. So. I found that way with putting down animals as well. Well, wait a minute. So was your life really terrible when you had to put yeah, down Kitty? Yeah, I was like, I was like nineteen. You know, remember, every time they do this thing, which you see in the news every day now, worst economy. We are in yeah. the worst economy since nineteen eighty three. Yeah, this is the worst since nineteen eighty three. When I was 19 and living in that garage, <laughs> 1983, wow. smack dab in the middle of no jobs, no money, nothing. no no nothing. You know, I think for me it was, yeah, I, I mean, I'm in a pretty good place in my life, but there's definitely a lot of stressors and, you know, having my cat when I got my baby was, I needed him. It's kind of like I was, you know, freaking out. You know, I just had this small child here and she was driving me crazy. And then there was my cat who shows me unconditionally love. And I've had him 16 years. That's a lifetime. Mm. And then he just out of the blue is like, I'm out. He's just like, I'm really sick. You've got a kid now. And, you know, you've, I felt like, oh, I'm choosing my child over my cat, which, you know, didn't that was a cats, struggle. Didn't cats... <laughs> Not dogs, but didn't cats used to be like Indians? Yes, they just wander off. They're and like, seen them again. I think it's about time I die, and then they, they just do. Go they off know, and they, they know where to somewhere. go, and they would die quietly. Now, my cat just started like acting weird. I brought him to the vet, and they were like, "Oh, he's severely anemic, and he's probably got a blood disease." And it was just, you know, I spent a lot of money keeping him alive for like an extra six months, which was super fun. And then one day, he was like. I'm just going to piss in your daughter's room uncontrollably. Mm. And then I took him to the vet. That's all it took? Well, I mean, it was like he lost all of his control over everything. And he started throwing up. And it was like, you knew. I didn't want him to be in pain. He didn't seem to be in pain up until that day. So I took him there. And I do want to point out one thing. And also let you guys know that I have another amazing great cat story later. But this is what I took away from this. While they put him down... And I you know, was signing the paperwork and, you know, they were like, oh, we're going to cremate your cat and send him to you. This perfect stranger came right up to me. This woman around my age was very nice about it and just said, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Is it OK if I give you a hug? Oh. Now, normally I'd be like, get away from me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, but I actually I actually needed that hug. I really needed that hug in order to sort of like gather my strength to drive home. And I, re- and I was like, that's so nice because I'll people are not that nice that anymore. S- I'll tell you why I love that story. It means we're done with COVID. <laughs> that, that, that's all I need. That's a, a stranger yeah. hugging you. That's she all, hugged me. That would she have never me. happened no, a year right. and a half it ago. It wouldn't have been. She would have been yes. screaming at you for not yes, double you're masking. You're crying through your yeah. mask. It's coming out. Right. Your tears are COVID tears. Do you guys, I've always had this sort of joke slash thought that the vet, the vet never really seems to have a price. Like yes. if you're going to get a roof on your house and you call in three guys and the one guy, he wants, it's $21,000, but he's going with the presidential three tab shingle. And then the <laughs> other guy is going with the faux slate and that's 26 mm. K. And then the third guy's coming in, but he's going to strip the old roof and resheathe it with ply. So he's a little more, but you get it all in front of you. The 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 animals the vet it's it's all a mystery it's a, mystery. It's a riddle mm-hmm. it's it starts off with a lot of vagaries they may have this and it may be that and and we don't know it's always different we're, prices the first we, time we, it took blood yeah we're not sure what what's going on could be this could be that <laughs> also with the the vet's the best job in the world because. You go in to get your car fixed and the guy's like it's thirty two hundred dollars to replace the transmission but right. he doesn't stop and go. But your car may not run. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay, don't hold the outcome. Do not hold me responsible if you cannot back down this driveway after <laughs> after paying us. So true. But that's that's the conceit. Yes. With the vets, like I understand, I will give you eleven thousand dollars for the surgery. And then the dog may die the next day, understood, and you'll still be paid. You'll still do it, everything. By the way, putting my cat down was the cheapest part of every single thing I did. Every time we took blood, every time they did the blood panel, it was still more expensive than to put him down and then to have the crematorium call me. They, they, you know, sent me his ashes, which... I don't know. I mean, like, it could be Hermosa Beach. I have no idea if it's actually my cat. It mm-hmm. just looks like I think sand. Freak, the Freakonomics podcast probably, did, I think, did a, a little uh, uh, look into that. And uh, the, it's often um, other pets uh, that are mixed in. 
Oh my god, my cat hated other pets and other oh, people. Yeah, mm. for eternity. <laughs> How many animals do I have in this box that they gave me? I I look, not only might you have other animals that have been put down, but who knows? How many rats or roaches crawled oh, into the kiln right. too? Uh, you know, bro, there you could don't be know. just so, wildlife well, in there. Well, here's the thing: when they sent me the ashes, I put those ashes next to my cat that died, you know, 16 years ago, and my mom. So I figured, like, the older we get, we just start collecting boxes of ashes. All right, like, it's that's what happens, right? Yeah. So what's uh, what's a good long life like? Four, for a cat? And, four and a half boxes. Oh, for, no, I mean for you. <laughs> oh, for me, yeah. Well, you want you want your so, mom, you I want got your mom, dad, I got you the, want a couple yes. cats. So maybe four, four and a half. Who's the half? Well, no, I'm that's saying it's over under. You know, oh, okay. you hear those studies that America has <laughs> oh, two point three two children. children. Well, yeah, there's not yeah. a. Well, there's sometimes there is. There is Brad Williams. <laughs> <laughs> But well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think maybe five boxes. I think when you're at five boxes, then you should start worrying about when you're going into a box. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean? And then you start making room. My mom is in a beautiful box. It looks like a wine box. And I've had more than one person be like, oh, that's a beautiful wine box. Like, go to open it. I'm mm. like, that's my mom. Mm. And then they quickly shut it. Mm. But I like watching their face. No urn, huh? <laughs> you know, that was considered the urn when I, you know, was at the funeral home and he was mm. showing me all this stuff. Uh, those, you know, God bless them. You know, you're you're in just a state of like grief, but we're still a comedian. So I remember him just like, so we're going to split up the ashes between you and your brother. And I was like, give me more. And he was like, and I go, I was her favorite. And he was horrified. I was like, I'm just kidding with you. I go, but seriously, just a tiny bit yeah. more. I, I tried to perceptible. <laughs> I tried to do a crank anchors bit a million years ago that I don't think we I ever got off the ground. Sometimes you have <laughs> sometimes you have these concepts and you're like, oh, this is good, and it just never really works out. And then sometimes you have these concepts that are like, ah, that's that's not going to work. And then it does. It's right. really hard to gauge. But the concept I was in love with, and I'll screw it up a little bit, but I was calling into a car wash because. I work for like a crematorium right. and I stopped at the car wash between the crematorium and the funeral home. Oh. And I, evidently the urn had popped open and tipped over and you guys vacuumed when you oh guys were God. cleaning the car. So I need the contents really funny. of the vacuum <laughs> <laughs> because the somebody's grieving and this thing's going off in an hour and I don't have anything in this urn. Now I probably, I probably, yeah, knocked it over, popped over. I'm not blaming your guys, but I do need what's in that vacuum. But did you actually make the call? I yeah, I, I did. And I don't know if we ever aired it or I don't if it just didn't didn't work. But here's here's a concept. And I, I think this is it's it sounds like I'm goofing around, but uh, but I'm being serious here. Okay. I believe because the vets are, are shrouded in mystery. Mm hmm. I believe that's the way they like it. Oh, I don't. They never see flex pricing. Yeah, they don't. They don't do a thing like when you get froyo and it's like, all right, single scoop <laughs> is uh, four ninety nine. Then if you want the jimmies, that's an extra fifty cents. Like you can look, yeah, right on the wall and see mm -hmm. what's doing them again. Blood test. I don't know what's it. Hernia surgery. It, it, it depends on the cat. Yes, like it's, it's I, always everything. You're everything's right. flexible. The place in Santa Monica could be 300 times more expensive than the place in oh, yeah. Silmar. Oh, yeah. I, I, no one has any idea. You just kind of go to the closest place. I think a lot of it, a lot of the pricing is based on what the person looks like who's bringing the animal in. I was like, just going to say, look, are, like how distressed do put, I look. If you're I, wearing a big tennis bracelet. And also, uh, do I look like I really love my cat? Because I have a feeling if somebody came in and was like, look, my cat's sick, I mean, I don't know. Then they'd be like, oh, we uh, can't even upsell them. That's because that cat where this is going. <laughs> that's where this is going. What's the cat's name? Not sure. Yeah, you, you pull in in your loaded Audi, and they see you get out of your... Crying. You're, you're crying with your $3,000 handbag, I and they're like, oh, we're goosing this <laughs> shit up through the roof. This woman loves this cat. It's her whole life. She's over 40. She's clearly single. Right, right. This is where this all, is her, her all her extra income is going. <laughs> going. Oh, we do. Uh, oh, we do have a crank anchors about scattering oh. the ashes oh over, the, God, so over the open sea. <laughs> I forgot about this one because you don't have to keep 
the uh, the the urn next to your bed. No, like Jody, you can scatter it over the open it's sea. It's not next to my bed. It's in my bed. <laughs> Sorry for insulting you. <laughs> Sorry. It's amazing. I forgot that call. That's yeah. amazing. Well, wait a second. Do you have any ashes at home? Uh, I know I, some people don't. I got my. I have my dog Molly's ashes still, and the paw print. They gave you the paw print. They gave me the paw print, but we're such a horrible family. We <laughs> busted the plate. <laughs> oh my it's like God. it's a little ceramic. Yeah, it looks like a saucer with the paw yeah. print in it. Of course. It's it's snapped in half because wow! What do you mean? You play with oh, this? Oh, that's my no. so that's so that that's yeah, actually played, an ink we played, blot. We played frisbee with it. <laughs> no, you know somebody set it on the side of a fucking yes. counter next to the box. They were and trying to use it as a coaster. <laughs> was feel you know knocked it off the thing. You know we didn't we didn't take care of it. That's you didn't take care of Molly's paw print. Right. So this is from the vet. Actually, they did an ink print. Uh, they uh, they did his paws and his mouth, which is a little odd when I was like, why did they do it? Is that weird? But I'm not going to lie. I did mouth kiss my cat quite a bit. So Mm -hmm. I felt like that was uh, really nice of them to do, but it was a little odd. Okay. The paw print, (laughs) I bide by. The mouth print (laughs) seems... That's a Rorschach test. Yeah, first off, it's, kind it's, of, yeah. it's un- What do you guys see? It's unreadable. What do you see? I see two lesbians scissoring. <laughs> what do you My see, cat Brian? was so into tree. lesbian porn, <laughs> so it makes sense. I, here, here's what I'm saying. Um, look, I've, <laughs> all right, I've been fingerprinted, you know, quite a few times. Obviously. <laughs> Mostly just when the uh, notary comes mm. by, but yeah. uh, it's a, you know, they take your thumb and whatever, but. If I had to fingerprint my face, it would put me off. Well, you he's know? dead, so he didn't mind. They but... do the face. They do it after they <laughs> I die. I would assume my cat was so angry. But that's bad spirit. It's bad yeah. spirit. You're right. I do but it I, while the pre- things alive. I appreciate it. Now, I'm looking at these coasters. What do you think about, we should go into business, the three of us right now, doing paw print of your deceased pet coasters? Oh, I yeah. tried that. It broke. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we broke it. <laughs> We only had one. If you had all four, so, and then your friends come over and they're like, "These are very unique coasters." You're like yeah. that's my dead dog. Yeah, and you got the left rear. <laughs> Do, so don't you think there's a business? You know, we have this huge homeless problem in Los Angeles. Don't you think there's a business of getting a homeless person to shepherd in your cat to oh. the vet? You know, for, for cost purposes. For cost purposes, oh, that he's. Oh. This is his. Okay, the person's homeless. We we don't get him. You know, if it's a dog, we use lamp cord for yeah. a leash. Oh, you know, tie that the Dolce lamp cord. Cord. Uh, uh, collar. Yeah, and we just get him in there, and then he's there, and then they do. They'll probably go pro bono. They'll be like oh, this homeless guy. Yeah, Obviously, right. he's an empty bag. This is all he has. All he has you know is what the whole I mean? Thing. You're right. They probably would just be like, "We'll just do it for free. Let's right. just take care of this." Right, guy. and then the homeless guy comes out. You know, you give him forty bucks. He gets himself some fentanyl, and you go right <laughs> back into the jag. <laughs> Don't you think? First, I have to get a Jag. Oh, well, you know, it's whatever incredible. luxury brand. Okay, you have that's to fine then. Yeah, I'd say on. let's do it. Let's just, let's get, they make money. I save money. So wait, wait, wait. Cat lives, maybe. We don't right. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the thing. I think the second I said I'm a single mom, they went, oh, like the price oh. was up here. Oh. I said single mom. and they, they was like They were like, oh, all right, you have a baby at home. You love this cat, but not as much as your human baby. Oh, right, right. So the price dropped a little bit. But I'll tell you, when my cat, before I had the baby, I, the teeth were getting pulled. They were. I remember them literally saying on the phone, so it's going to be between 800 and 1600. And I was like, yeah. I don't, they're like, we got to get in there. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta get in there and see i was like yeah all right it was it was like and then it was like 9 30 something i was like how do you what you're right like it's so weird yeah big window yeah brian you ever put anything down yeah, this, so <laughs> this is such a weird conversation because i have a uh a dog that is f- with like a 14 and a half mm-hmm. 15 he's an old man he's okay for his age but you know he's not long for this earth right. probably another year or two at best mm-hmm. uh but um, emotionally uh we got uh this dog 
a, a year after I started cancer treatment, right, in 2010. Oh. And it was like the first sign that we're going we're gonna to like plan for the future and not right. live for today. Right. You know what I mean? So this mm. was... Uh, Symbolic. It's, oh. and every day I think of I've never had a pet before. And so this oh. is my first pet. And I'm like, fuck, it's coming. It's yeah. coming. It's now, now it's... Whereas where it was, it was, it was 400 days. Now mm-hmm. it's 399 days. And that day is coming and we're going to have to make a decision. It's going to be devastating. Well, I mean, first of all, it's so sad. My cat was 16. I think... I think all of us, we still, and you'll probably end up getting another pet. We do this thing. Oh, we, we know we're going out. We, don't, yeah, we know we're going to outlive them. <laughs> we keep signing this like contract with our, just like to break our heart. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We're just like, let's get this dog. And in 10 years, I will be devastated. <laughs> yeah. But we're also so superficial that the second you get that new puppy, oh, yeah. you just shift completely <laughs> and forget <laughs> about the old dog. I, I, I mean, that's what I did. <laughs> We just got a new dog. <laughs> that looked exactly like the old dog or no? No, lab, but black lab oh. versus blonde lab. I see what you did. And this dog first was a female named Molly who had a thin head. And I don't like streamlined heads on dogs. I don't know. I, like I knew that about you. I heard that about you. bucket head mm-hmm. and Phil just has this <laughs> huge bucket head and I smack his forehead all the time. Just yeah. smack, smack, smack. Just love that big bucket. There's a picture of Phil somewhere, Chris, of him looking into this booth. I don't know yeah, where yeah. that Aww. is, but yeah, it's it's yeah. so funny. I brought him in here and he's so big. He's well, like, how, what's going on Phil. with how Dawson? How old is he? You know, you know what I do with dogs is I go, um, I do the same thing I do with Norman Lear. <laughs> Which is, I've been saying Phil is six for three years, you know, and I've been saying Norman Lear is 91 for four years. <laughs> Norman Lear's like 97 now. But I, every year I just go, he's 92 years yeah. old. He's oh, 92. Look at that. Phil. There's Phil. How big is that dog's paws? Those are huge. It's enormous. Well, the yeah. reason I ask is, and Brian, how old was how old is your dog? Fifty. And by, I mean, what breed is he? Is he uh, small Jack dog? Jack Russell Dachshund. Yeah. yeah. So the smaller, dogs. yeah, the smaller the dog, the longer they live. Mm-hmm. And I did feel bad. I didn't say this out loud, but while I was in the vet, you get like time with your pet before you put them down, and they let you have. And I was holding my cat, and somebody walked by with the dog maybe twice the size of Phil. It was just a giant retriever. It was so massive, and I almost yelled out, and I didn't. Like, enjoy the five years you have with that large dog. <laughs> Let's hug it out, bitch. <laughs> What's protocol when you run a vet? What do you and mean you go, look, um, I'm going to let you have some quiet moments with uh, your dog mm-hmm. before you leave. But all good vet doors have the same window that mm-hmm. this door has. It's, mm-hmm. like a, it's like a viewing port, mm-hmm. like a vertical viewing port. <laughs> now, you're not the only one who's grieving. Yeah. And we don't have unlimited square footage here. <laughs> <laughs> what is the protocol? Like the third time I'm the tech or the nurse and I pass by the door and you're fucking texting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're buried you're in done. your phone. You're, you're like, are you done uh, with yeah. that? You're watching Ozark on your phone, <laughs> you know, like at a certain point, do I come in and go, okie dokie. Okie dokie. <laughs> I feel like it's ready. You, I'll tell you this though, at this vet, it, which was, they have a thing on the door. They do have a window like that. You are correct. But they also have like a door handle thing that says, Privacy, please. Someone is saying goodbye to their fur baby. And I was oh, like, oh, my God. That's like was, a euphemism for your snatch. <laughs> Which is exactly what I yeah. called it. In college, when there was fur down there, sure. there's no longer because, you know, millennials. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll be mistaken for one next time a guy goes down on you. <laughs> oh, um, but I mean, I was like, I looked at that and I was like, oh, God. And they did bring him to me and we were just sitting there. And then, yeah, after like 20 minutes, I was like, I don't. What else do I like? I'm so sad, but like I can't just sit in this room with this. And they were people were walking by. They were doing. I was Did like, Did you look at your phone? Yeah, of course, for oh. like a second. See, you know, who no, else, because he was sitting on you my know lap. Who else is look, and, you know, who else is looking at their phone. Who? God. <laughs> and he sees you looking at your phone. Look, I definitely know he is. There's many times I've asked for things and I have gotten no response. <laughs> I would make it a no phone zone. No phone zone. Well, no I wanted zone. to take a picture of him in my. Well, arms. you do that in the hall. With other like randos. I, it's, it's, I just don't want people in there st- fucking tweeting. I wasn't tweeting. Well, we don't know what you were doing, honestly. No. <laughs> Only God knows. God does No, God doesn't know because he was looking at his phone. So we're good. I would suggest if I ran the vet. Okay. I would say, let's treat this little area. So like, you know, people go, they go see Bruno Mars and they're stare, holding their phone over their fucking head the whole time. They don't even remember no. it. You know what I mean? For your own good, bag it up. Yeah. 
bag it up. You're right. Bag it up. It, it, it'll it'll be like a, like, a cr- like a Chris Rock oh, comedy show. Yes. You know what I mean? Just Enjoy, bag it let up. Let it. Look. I'll I'm t- doing you a favor. You You're going to fucking get a call from your ex. It's going to piss you off. It, the reason I did, and now you're going to feel bad, is because I was afraid my daughter's daycare was going to call me. I had to make sure that they didn't call. Oh, your real child? Mm-hmm. The real child? The one that my cat knew was more important and left this earth because I chose my baby? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Enough depressing cat talk. Woo! Godfrey's going to join us in the next, or after the next segment. We got some... Um, what do we got? Rotten Tomatoes. We got man. some Rotten yeah. Tomatoes to play. Woo! And uh, I'm like, oh, I gotta say, Brian, Brian, Brian used to, I wouldn't say dominate the game, but he, I would. he, uh, <laughs> he was a consistent winner. All right. In 2022, I, I made the decree. I'm, I'm back. So you're back right now. Right. Well, I'm back. I, indicates you were once there. I, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming you're for coming. him. No, no, you're long, never, no you're not longer. Back. You're just, you're I made a Joe Namath type prediction, and this and would I be think an it, I, I, prediction. I think it rattled Brian a little bit because he's been 2022 has not been his year for this game. All right, well, I can't wait to play. I've next, I've never played, so <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just, you just uh, poked the bear. I poked I'm, the I'm bear. Look, off, you're you're looking slightly this. unhinged. I, I feel it. All <laughs> right, let me tell you about uh, Black Buffalo. If you're over. 21, and you do a little dip or you like to chew every once in a while, then you can uh, join the herd with the tobacco alternative, Black Buffalo. Dawson, I know you've been enjoying yourself some Black Buffalo. Yeah, it's kind of amazing how good this stuff tastes. I mean, if you're a dipper, you're not going to miss anything. And it's (laughs) (laughs) plant-based, which is great. No, it's it's non-tobacco. It's got a ton of nicotine in it, and, uh, and it really helps. And I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where, you know, if you swallow chewing tobacco, you can make yourself sick. I still haven't brought myself to try to swallow this so I don't have to spit, but that's what I'm going to try next. It is uh, black buffalo. It's made from uh, edible green leaves and uh, food grade ingredients with the same flavor and texture as traditional tobacco products. And uh, they got all sorts of Different. They got pouches. They got long cut. They got uh, winter green. They got mint. They got straight. They got peach. And uh, even blood orange ships directly to your door. Use the promo code Adam at checkout for twenty percent off your first order at blackbuffalo.com. Right, Dawson. Warning: This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. This product is intended for twenty-one years or older. Current consumers of tobacco underage sale prohibited may not be available in some states. All right, we'll take a quick break. We got the Rotten Tomatoes game right after this. Jody, you bought some mom jeans that were pre torn. <laughs> Save this for the news. <laughs> no, okay, so, and actually, right before this started, the button just popped right off mm. of these jeans that I spent good money on. So, you know how they have boyfriend jeans that are like labeled boyfriend jeans? You know, what does that mean? No. That means they're just kind of big and baggy and, you know what I mean, they fit a woman, just kind of, they hug your hips. It's oh, like right. as if I just grabbed my boyfriend's jeans uh, after a night of sex uh, and I was like, I'm going to throw these on, but they're mm-hmm. like kind of loose. So those are like, those have been a trend for like, I'd say 20 years, boyfriend jeans. Mm-hmm. And then of course you have the mom jeans, which is just high-waisted jeans. But I literally bought these jeans. I loved them. I put them on and then I got home and I actually read the label and they are actually labeled distressed Mom jeans, oh. which I think is redundant. I mean, yeah. just say mom. mom. Like, for distressed moms? Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're actually torn a little bit, which I think represents how I feel on the inside, uh, my nerves. But they don't. Did, you, did it come home? <laughs> I mean, did you feel the pain when it said mom jean? Did that did that sting a, a, a little, little bit? A little, because I mean, they don't actually sell dad jeans. They only sell boyfriend jeans and mom jeans, and they don't sell husband jeans. I don't mm. even know what that. You don't wear jeans, Adam, do you? Really. You know, it, it's it's weird. It, there's, uh, I guess, there's a pants pecking order. Okay. <laughs> and it used to stop at Jean, like, okay, that's as casual or as comfortable right, okay. as you're going to be. And then somebody invented sweatpants mm. that weren't just for jogging. And mm-hmm. then somebody invented these sort of oversized basketball trunks. Yep. And I don't know where where, where we're going next. Just pure fig leaf or something. But once you get into once you get into wearing the sort of the baggy trunks yeah. shorts thing, I, everything else feels weird and confining. Were you a big jeans guy for a long time? Well, I used to work construction oh. my whole life. So you pretty much just wore, the, you know, this is sort of pre-cargo shorts right. and stuff. And also, 
you needed some degree of protection, like you spent a lot of time down <laughs> on your knees and stuff, you know, putting in baseboard. So jeans were the were the weapon of choice. That that's what you wore to work. Yeah. That's what all all the construction guys just wore, you know, jeans and and work boots. And then you had your painter jeans. Those were oh, those yes. are the ones that were splattered. Yeah, splattered. Yes. The cargo shorts up. really are the dad jeans. Yeah. Yes, the cargo shorts mm-hmm. are for sure. Absolutely. I I think when I saw mom jeans, it was more the distressed because it's it. I was like, why why? I don't. I mean, I don't consider myself a mom jeans chick. I think I I love jeans. I think they're sexy on guys and girls. I was like, yeah, but it definitely brought me down a, a small but notch. You, you discovering that, would that be tantamount to you making a porn and then sending it to Pornhub mm-hmm. and then filing it, it in under. like chunky MILF? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, and then you discovered yeah, that. I would be a little, yes. And I probably, yeah, I would be a little insulted oh, yeah. just for chunky. Yeah, a little chunky. I'm not chunky. I'm no, a little I know. They did. That soft. was their call. So, yeah, it is their call. You're right. If it's soft, soft, like untoned MILF is a little bit more me. I yeah, prefer again, that. that's not me talking. Okay, you're right. It's <laughs> porn hub, hub. So I should actually contact them. <laughs> <Yeah, once, laughs> once, once Elon buys Pornhub, we're going to oh, fucking straighten yeah. this shit out. I can't out. wait for him to do that. That yeah. is the next thing. It's going to be so good. What are those categories going to look like? He should just do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I what mean? What do you think he would change the categories to? Well, first off, <laughs> he could buy Pornhub with what he's got in the ashtray of one of his Teslas, right? Mm. I mean, I mean I let's know. just say, I don't know. Well, let's just say it's a billion dollars. Okay. He just okay. spent $44 billion. Right. It, yeah. He could he could buy one. Yeah. Pocket change. He should just do it as a goof, you know, and just if say, he, I'm shaking yeah. it up. If you guys were to buy something like a Pornhub, would you change the categories? Would you, or would you just like leave it the way it is? I mean, uh, would my I, faves. My face, Brian's face. <laughs> yeah, I'd have his Editor's pick. Picks, of, picks of the week. Picks of the week. I, picks I, of the week. I, what, I, what I would immediately do is join ranks with like Rotten Tomatoes. You know what oh. I mean? So we could check some rankings. There you know what should I mean? be a ranking for porn. I, I mean, like much a, time a I've tomatoes. wasted looking at some eighteen percenter. Like soy I mean, I, condoms. I, I wish or. I'd, or I wish I'd known. You, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like a used condom meter alert or something. Like, I'm just trying to think of, like, you know what I mean? Like Stay away like, from the shit in the 90s. That's artsy <laughs> European bullshit. Yeah, um, we, they had, I don't know if it was, Chris, now you got to look, but <laughs> Hustler, I think, used to do porn reviews or whatever. And they uh, had, like, limp, oh, wood, Oh, my you God. Know, we have to read some porn <laughs> reviews. Leather. Half bone, oh, you know, so, oh, chubby. Yes, the way like, they, oh, chub, like chub. Yes, like you get it, like a quarter chub. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember, but it was it was Dawson. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they had some sort of boner meter. Yeah, oh, no, the they, boner like, meter. We give this three dongs. Well, yeah, or oh. something. Yeah, well, there is AVN for the AVN awards. Yes, you know, yeah. they, they yes. obviously. Yeah, well, this is way this is them. way pre that though. That was this definitely would be in the, yes. the back part of Hustler magazine where they oh, review it, and God, then the boner yeah. meter. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. That. So we'd have something. We'd have a ranking system. I started doing all my baldy ones that way. We'd have a we had a we had a popular. <laughs> you know, we'd freshen it up like today's Arbor Day. So we'd have yes. oh, fucking themed. against a tree. The tree. Has you know, all be stuff trees. Stuff would all pop up Absolutely. at the top. That's good stuff right I, there. I, look, Elon should do it. We that, should, that's all. Elon, if you're listening right now, yeah, that's your next purchase. Yeah, squeeze the trigger on that. Just do it. Just to, just to make everyone's head explode. That's all. <laughs> Second of miles coming. Yeah. Make a lot of things mm-hmm. explode. Just, yeah. just do it. <laughs> all right. We'll see if we can find that uh, rating system. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it was probably Hustler. Could have been Swank. or Could have been Wii. Wii. Oh, oh, U-I. Perfect 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I don't, I, I don't remember any of those. Mm-hmm. You remember Perfect Ten? Perfect Ten was a good. Don't magazine. think I remember that. No, I'm. Sh- I don't. It didn't have the production that like a Playboy had, but the girls were they, they advertised all natural, no silicone. No, no oh, natural. all right. Well, yeah. I'm not into all natural. But then, kidding. when you? <laughs> no, I don't buy any of that stuff. You only, I only know like the really mainstream ones because most girls. How um, dare you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I would just normally just go to Teen Beat. I'd pass by those. But my dad got Playboy. A lot when of I was teens beaten to Perfect yeah. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> Not so many Tigers, well but more teens. <laughs> but also, uh, it's got to be a lot of pressure working the sort of editorial side of Perfect Ten because you're seeing chicks all the time yeah. and you're going, look, you're a perfect 
eight, eight but this not, is, yes. we call it Perfect Ten. As one who purchased a few Perfect Tens over the years, mm-hmm. um, the girls were, they not added up to a ten. Oh, they, all they, together. They, Collectively, they, 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 they were perfect in the ten. books department they made up for in the um, uh, lack of uh, silicone. You know what I mean? That was their hook. Uh-huh. It was what they were knocking Were they like, models. but like, were they full bush? Yep. Was it 70s it was, bush? It was, it was, no, no. This th- is like this is early 2000s. Oh, so yeah. it's like all cleaned up. I remember having these like early thoughts as a like 10 year old, not not as it pertained to porn, but. The, the same year you adopted Kitty? When I was, yeah, right? <laughs> she adopted me. When, Who rescued him? When I was when I was adopting Kitty, they'd, they'd have these commercials, and the commercials were like local spots for the Orange County International Raceway, and they're having the funny cars were coming into town and dragsters. It was just more places we weren't going as a family, but <laughs> they would have Fox Night, and that was Foxes oh. got in for free, and it was Fox Night at OCIR, and they'd play Fox on the Run, and the the guy would do the the entire entire shtick which i don't know if you play the song i'll I'll do 30 seconds of it because i I remember it from my youth i was never there right but i i remember the the commercial from from my youth i don't know if we can you got it dawson go ahead oh he's waiting for his computer to to boot up so fox night like you'd be a fox to get in like fox they meant ladies free you know but they call they call them foxes could you imagine if somebody did that today like 1975 all the foxes you foxy thing get in right (laughs) all right dawson's still waiting for his computer over there okay oh (gasps) wait we got the rating guide there you go we got to zoom in on those boners the rating guide (sighs) for the x-rated reviews is this from hustler what year is yeah this from 77 from 77. Yeah, so uh, you, we can zoom in. Uh, just uh, hit the ratings there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> Three quarter erect, half erect, one quarter erect, totally limp. Yes. I would argue you could just write limp. Yeah, it doesn't have to be totally limp. It's like totally sold out the venue. Just read, say yeah. sold read the out. description of totally limp. Couldn't get it up if you, uh, if you used a crane. <laughs> crane. Were you just, I can't get my dick up. I'm going to use a crane. Don't use Viagra. Use a crane. Oh. Here, I'll, I'll read one of the reviews. So this, yes, is, this is a movie f- called Count the Ways. Oh. That's a build as build as the quote, build as the most erotic love story ever filmed. This hustler review wholeheartedly disagrees, <laughs> calling it nothing more than nonstop sex between all those West Coast regulars we've been seeing too much of lately. Oh. Basically, hippie professor keeps his job by screwing the dean's domineering daughter, but then falls in love with one of his pupils. Romance and jealousy ensue. And Prof displays his deep emotions by deciding he respects his pupil too much to ball her at the first opportunity. (laughs) However, apparently things like terrible dubbing and sex scenes unrelated to the plot make this a Hustler non-favorite. It gets a three-quarters erect. Worthwhile, almost gets it up. However, it can still be beat. Beat. Wow, uh, good. Three quarters of wreck. That's pretty sound good. That shabby. doesn't sound bad. Um, I'm about to blow all your minds, but but I wrote soft porn. So hearing that description, right. Chris, I was like, oh yeah, it's something I wrote for Coed Confidential, all four seasons on Skinamax. Really? Also, it's yeah, it's my first like real writing job, and I thought, mm. oh my god, this is I've made it. And then <laughs> when we had our first meeting, you know, because Cinemax owned by HBO, they were like, hey, so we need four sex scenes. Per half an hour episode. Full sex. Can't just mm-hmm. be like a girl in the shower rubbing her boobs. It's mm-hmm. got to be like full sex. Could be girl on girl. That's totally mm-hmm. fine. Just has to be. And I was like, wow, this is this is my life. But I can tell you it was one of the best jobs I ever had. What years approximately? Oh, like about, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago? No, 15 years ago. No, yeah, 10, 12. Whenever co ed confidential was. We got it was well by. <laughs> hey, put that up again because I want to read all the descriptions underneath the full erect. Full <laughs> erect. If this one doesn't get it up, you are probably dead because it is almost a constant turn on. That's erection with an exclamation point. Mm-hmm. Then three quarters worthwhile almost gets it up. However, it can still be beat. And then, oh, that's, we already read that one. Then half a wreck, slightly worthwhile, probably get it up on your own. And then one quarter rectus might get it up <laughs> if you <laughs> use the crane and then totally limp. Oh, you got to use a crane again. So hold on a second, though. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like those, are, like that erection, the full erection doesn't look really, don't you think it should be a slightly more up? Well, I think the guy's standing. 
Mm-hmm. And that's kind of oh, where it is. So he's looking down. Yeah. yeah he's looking <laughs> down. It also looks like an earbud. It does look a little bit like the yeah. earbuds. All right. We got Fox. Uh... Oh. oh, yeah. This is so good. I love this song. Any excuse. <laughs> Fox 9, OCIR, Orange County International Raceway for the 10, the 210, the 405, the 105, the 310, and the Slauson Cutoff. Come on! We got dragsters, we got funny cars, we got the human bomb, we got the wheeling school bus, we got the English leather girls, we got Papa Do Run Run, it's Fox 9, Papa Do Run Run is going to be playing in the infield. Qualifications, noon, eliminations under the lights, Shirley Cha Cha Multi. Downey will be there. Big Daddy Don Garland, the Hawaiian Billy McEwen. I'll be there. Big Daddy says he's taking that trophy home this way, but surely touch out well down has other. Foxes will be free. English leather girls. Papa do run run. Sound like the f- wheel standers. All right. Hemi and their glass is gonna be there. It, it was all right. That's good. I was like, this is the greatest. This would be the greatest day of my life. My fucking loser dad <laughs> would drive me to this place. But all of Adam's treasure childhood memories are imagined. Like or what TV. it would be like. Yeah. Yeah. The Super Bowl, the motocross, all the great commercials. Would, oh. They would come into town and then I'd get to see the commercials. That was it. That was far. There's no way my dad's hunk of shit VW bug <laughs> was making it to Orange County. Like it was a bridge too far. But even at the age of nine or 10, I had this sort of comical thought, which is I would like to work the gate at the uh, Orange County International Raceway on Fox night and, you know, let a few chicks pass. And then the third chick, like, it's Fox <laughs> night. <I'm sorry>. You <laughs> understand. <laughs> I don't know what you look like in high school, but you ain't a Fox. It, it's called Fox night, not four and a half night, not, not long of the tooth night. Not meerkat night. <laughs> not ferret night. Not, that's right. not lynx <laughs> night. Not hippo day. It is fox <laughs> night, baby. Now, look, I'll tell you what. I'll pull you out of line. I got an evaluation team over there. You make your argument. I need you to step on that scale. <laughs> I was having these these thoughts when I was 10. Oh, my God, that's ten. great. Do you yeah. think any girl was ever turned away? No. Probably no. not. They no, the bigger they are, the more beer they're going to buy. They're probably... Oh, good thinking. They're probably dudes dressing up as chicks oh, who yeah. weren't being turned away. <laughs> That's a good idea. All right. Should we uh, get into our game now? As California heads into its 15th year of being promised a bullet train from L.A. to San Francisco, we're certainly no strangers to falling behind on deadlines. But how close are we to the promises Hollywood has made for us? We've obviously passed the year and movie 2001, as well as the year 2015, which was home to the futures in RoboCop and Back to the Future 2. I love this. Today, we're in the year of Soylent Green, Mm -hmm. set in 2022. This is is a great topic. But what other movie fates await us? Let's find out as we look towards movies taking place in the future. The year is 2032. An evil crime lord has been thawed after being cryogenically frozen for almost 40 years and manages to escape. The only man who can stop him is a risk-taking cop who plays by his own rules. Also frozen for four decades and then released into a futuristic world that is seemingly free of crime. And Taco Bell is every restaurant. (laughs) Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, and Sandra Bullock star in 1993's Demolition Man. So this was supposed to take place now? 2032. Oh, 2032. Did you get that right? Did you get that right? We had a big problem in the late 80s with futuristic movies because they would make a movie in like 1989 and they go, the year 2007. (laughs) Men or yes. women, women or men, uh, we live in, a, in an ozone-free environment where everyone lives underground. It's like, that's nine years from now, Bert. Like, no, it's, two, it's 2000. And yeah, I know, but chronologically, it's not that far away. It's she, the 2000 fucked it she up She froze herself for nine years that's and right. woke up to a whole different world. All right. Um, <clears throat> this wasn't good. I always get it confused with Judge Dredd, which came out yeah. sort of kind of the same, of the same. The same. kind of the same outfit, same thing. It was it was shit, but how much shit? How how shit? How shit? Uh, and I don't know. 
Judge Dredd was a comic book and that this was. wasn't, or I don't know. Well, they might have both been. I have yeah, no idea. who knows? All right. It's the loans fun. Wesley Snipes is kind of fun. Sandra Bullock was, you know, in the height of her beautiful power. So it was kind of fun. I think it was pre Sandra Bullock being famous. It yeah, was. Th- it, wa- yeah. it was. It was. Oh, Jesus. It's fucking hard to tell on this one. All right. You guys in? Yeah. Yeah. I said 18%. I took a little bit of a risk. I don't think I think this is not that bad. I went forty-five. I did thirty-five. Demolition Man is fresh. Oh, Whoa! oh, it's sixty-two percent. Jesus Christ! Wow. I remember that like this was okay and Dread was awful. Oh, okay. or just Dread or whatever. Oh, I thought that. Yeah. I thought the Chris would punish us. Well, I'm out before we began. All right, well. The year is twenty-one oh one. Rising sea levels and global warming have wiped out coastal cities and reduced the world's population. And now, humanoid robots seemingly capable of complex thought have been created. This film follows a prototype mecha child who sets off on a dark fairy tale adventure with his teddy bear companion in the hopes of one day becoming a real boy. The film was developed by Stanley Kubrick and ultimately finished by Steven Spielberg after Kubrick's death. Haley Joel Osment and Jude Law star in 2001's mm-hmm. AI mm-hmm. Artificial Intelligence. I might be in the minority. I love this movie. I uh, never saw I, it. I, I, I liked. I, I liked it. I can't Just, imagine the score being high, high, no. high but I, I love this movie. Uh, the hype was really big. It was huge. Big huge. Hype. I remember just sort of thinking, eh, this isn't for me. I don't Actually, know. I thought I was going to get depressed. Like All right. Yeah, yeah. There are some depressing There are some moments. depressing moments. It's, it's a yeah. smart movie. Philip K. Duke. All right. Based on a, you know. All right. So uh, big hype, maybe a little, maybe a little lower with the critics than the than the hype. Um, <clears throat> much anticipated. The the big criticism of this at the time uh, I remember was uh, they thought that uh, Spielberg slapped on like a happy Hollywood Spielberg ending mm-hmm. uh, that uh, Kubrick <clears throat> could never have allowed, and Spielberg's like, oh, that's what he wanted. That was in the script. Right. All right. We locked in. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going 58%. Okay, I wrote that. I went 68%. 79. AI, artificial intelligence, is certified fresh. That's 75%. Mm. Oh. I, I really right. do love this. All right. When people have it at 64, that's weird. In the 23rd century, a New York City cabbie finds the fate of the world in his hands when uh-huh. a beautiful woman falls into his cab. Together, they attempt to keep an approaching great evil from destroying the world by collecting mystical tablets that could that could hold the key, directed by Luc Besson, Luc starring who what? Luc Besson. All right. <laughs> starring Bruce Willis, <laughs> Gary Oldman, and Mila Jovovich yep. from 1997, The Fifth Element. Yeah. I like, Gary I like so this. Great. I like this movie a lot. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm to think if I saw it or not. Mm. She wore that she, awesome yellow outfit. Doesn't she talk ass. in a really weird way? Am I thinking of, yeah, that's this I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, no idea. I've certainly heard of it. I, I can't remember if I saw it. Might have been her first acting? No. This, no. no. Was this her first? Mila? She was a model, right? She's yeah. a model, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. Or if she wasn't, she was leaving money on the table. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was. <laughs> All right, so what do the critics think of this one? Fifth <laughs> Element. I've, I've, Gary I've, Oldman's I've, great. Gary Oldman mm-hmm. is great. <clears throat> Bruce Willis, try, you know, taking a more serious role. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, he's riding on his whole like Die Hard, like this action in any year. Planet. All right, we locked in. Yeah, I have no idea. I just went sixty-eight again. Sixty-eight, eighty-two. The Fifth Element is fresh at seventy percent. Oh. Mm-hmm. Brian on a on a run here, but yeah. I think Jody's. Terrible. Oh, tight. What? No, I'm not great. Mm. <laughs> the year is 2274. Oh, my. On the surface, it seems that society has finally reached a balanced state of utopia. But the reality is that the world's resources have been consumed, and the only way to maintain the illusion of peace is to kill anyone who reaches the age of 30 oh, in an yeah. elaborate ceremony. Oh, my. Soon... One man learns the truth. Logan's run. And discovers a society of people who have managed to escape death are living on the fringes. Michael York and Richard Jordan star in 1976's Logan's Run. I never saw it. 
Saw it in the theater because, like, <clears throat> that's as you know, what what the fuck else was I gonna do? I was so <laughs> <laughs> Just walk go to, to the... Fox Night, man. Come yeah. on, yeah, I couldn't, he couldn't, I, go I to couldn't Fox walk night. to Fox Night. Go to I, Logan's could, Run. <clears throat> I could walk to the El Portal or the Guild, you know, there's a couple of theaters in town. Saw this one, <clears throat> yeah, and your whatever 33rd birthday, whatever they killed you. And so he took off and he got a hot chick who was kind of scantily clad. Now, the thing that I did take note of, which is, it's kind of weird as I think back on my life, because I was probably had this sort of comedic mind and I would take note of all these things. But if I ever told them to anyone, they'd go, oh, I don't know. Who cares? Shut up. (laughs) Why? Like Nobody gives a fuck. Pick up that shovel. Get the fuck out of the house. But I, my mind was doing it on its own. I was having these sort of young comedic thoughts. And what I noticed from this commercial is so logan's run came out in 76 right right? um charlie's angels was at the height of its powers in like 1979 Mm -hmm. or something right um they started showing reruns or they'd show like ktla movie of the week friday night logan's run Mm -hmm. they would advertise logan's run farrah fawcett had a miniature non-speaking role <laughs> as like the nurse assistant. She in was this, right? In Logan's run. Yeah, that's her in that little picture right there, I think. It looks like part of the drawing. She, yeah. she had a very small role in Logan's run, but when KTLA would say this Friday, Logan's run, starring Farrah Fawcett. Yep. I had, had I, and I was a 12, and I was like, that's bullshit, but I see <laughs> what they're doing there, because she's on fire, and the chick who played Logan's girlfriend, no one's, it's been right. three years, she's not in a hot, yep. hot uh, TV show right now, and you, that's what they did. You know who kept that up uh, for another decade or two was Blockbuster. Like, mm-hmm. if you, if, God forbid, Adam Sandler, you know, had a bit part in a movie in 1989. By 1998, yep. when he was a huge star, oh, I have the biggest picture on the uh, yep. on, on the poster, on the, uh, the right. box. They yeah, know. I mean, how far down the masthead is, or the credits is, is Farrah Fawcett? Might be or hard to maybe, tell now. Maybe they moved her. Famous, yeah, they yeah, they might have moved her, but I'm sure she was just nurse then. <laughs> All right, this movie was a what did they call her? Like nurse assistant or something? This was a this was a big deal when it came out, but right. I don't think it was good. So this is, is it? Am I dumb or has this been remade? I thought they did. I thought remake. remake. I Either thought they, they remade it or it. wasn't it a television series? Am I like, is that also they the Westworld? Did, they they blew the dust off this <laughs> okay. this know. thing and did something, a reboot of right. some form, I recall fifteen years ago or something. Okay. All right. This could um, really make or break mm, here. Because uh, you know, who knows? This could be, you know, mid seventies type affair or it could be mid twenties. We don't we don't know. Okay. You guys Mm-hmm. Locked in. Mm-hmm. I say rotten at forty nine. I'm draw. Thank God we're so close. I'm drawing dead here. I don't know anything about this. I went fifty one. Seventy one because it looks like Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> Logan's run is fresh oh. at sixty three percent. Okay. All right. Should Who one see this? Who mm-hmm. We should. You're the only who's seen it. Should one I, see this? I, it was. It was entertaining when I was eleven. I don't know what it's. I like, like the premise today. Okay. Yeah. And finally, the year is 3978. That's a long time. Wow. But the astronauts who've just crash landed oh, have no 30, idea of that. 3978? So all our pets are going to be dead. By the way, right? <laughs> so many boxes. So many boxes. <laughs> well, the planet's... You're going to be like a fucking U-Haul <laughs> with Grandma's attic up there. Sorry, go ahead. While the planet seems desolate at first, it's soon revealed that apes have evolved and become the dominant species while humans are mute creatures wearing animal skins. The film stars Charlton Heston, Roddy McDowell, and Kim Hunter from 1968, Planet of the Apes. Yes. And I just love, I love that um, Charlton Heston Mm. lands on a foreign planet and immediately grabs himself a super hot 60s Hottest. chick yeah. with fucking a bouffant blue eyeliner and everything. Yeah, she, yeah, where do you get eyeliner then? She, like, they're just... <laughs> you know, they were a source. You know, the There's Egyptians. No the Egyptians. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Boy, the charred <laughs> remains of our pets. She, <laughs> his girlfriend. I, 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 what year was this, Dawson? 1968. No, I'm sorry. It took place oh, in 3978. Right, what are the chances that... 
his girlfriend from 3978 right. would look exactly like a chicken <laughs> playboy from 1968. Yes. Exactly. I don't, I mean, what are the chances? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you, Max Pata, if you grab busty playmate Cynthia Myers from like 1967, 68, 69 in there, and she's hot, and then this chick, Charlton Heston's girlfriend right. from... Thirty nine seventy eight. Yeah, they look. Ex- they had the same makeup artist and hairstyle. Well, here's the thing: the apes kept the humans as pets, and you know how we like, you know, we'll fashion our poodles to mm-hmm. look like certain way. They were fashioning her to look like they probably had pinup girl pictures, mm. you know, of their ants. So you know what I mean, like the apes in the sixties. Well, this 60s. was <laughs> the the plan of the apes was the savior of my childhood. That uh, that and um, oh god, what was the uh, Omega Man, any Charlton Heston, oh, yeah. you right. know, end of days kind of thing. Yeah, I, I was, I was so down That's with that. That's another one with a weird love story slash love interest shoehorned in. Mm-hmm. And Omega Man, like they're literally about to be besieged by fucking zombies, and he's like, "All right, get ready, get to the window with your fucking shotgun." Hey, you're looking pretty good there, lady. Yeah. And then they pause it's, for a five yes. minute love scene. He dated like Foxy Brown in that movie. Oh, uh, Foxy Brown. Heston. I, I mean, honestly, I feel like all these movies, End of Days, everything. Why do they even? They ha- they force love stories, and they don't need a love story. They that that <laughs> they used to need one. They it's don't anymore. All right. right, you guys are ahead of me. I'm going to need to nail this one in order to claw myself back into this game. This is a perfectly fine. Fun movie. I have makeup. I probably won a can reward for the makeup. Did. You guys locked in? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 73. I said 88, and I wouldn't be surprised if I was too low. 84. Mm, Planet of the Apes. This is a nerd classic. Certified fresh. Yeah. At 86. Oh, oh, but you, we're like right in the middle of each other. I was 84, you were 88. 87. Well, this is a. Uh, Hope you be a learned your fight. lesson. Yeah. What, what, what do you think, what do you think the lesson? remake with Mark Wahlberg got? <laughs> That's in the 40s. <laughs> That's a pretty bad movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. So bad. All right, ready for some scores. You're looking for the girlfriend and yeah, yeah, uh, we Cynthia got Myers? Just, yeah, hold on. All right, all right. Drag but, this out. All right. Two scores first. We'll, we'll put it together. Gina Grad did not make the podium today. Yeah. Jody Miller did. <gasps> yeah, you did. With a score of 66. Very respectable. Is Good it? Score. Is it? Solid okay. Solid score. First okay. Solid. That score would win many games. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I'll take it. Not this one. <laughs> Adam Carolla also on the board. Yeah. With a score of 80. Oh. Yeah. That'll not be good, good for third place. Mm hmm. Leaving us bald Brian. Possibly because the ace man called his shot at the yes. beginning of the yeah, game. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Leaves us with one guy who wins, the rest of us lose. Bald Brian, 37 for the Let win. Let that be a lesson to you kids. Don't try it. It's the Washington Tomatoes game. You know how we do it. Talk the shit after you win. Yeah, yeah. it worked last time <laughs> I did it. So I'm, I'm, I'm one, at, one out of two. All right, Cynthia Meyer. What oh. year was she playmate? She was hot. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, you got to find a better picture of, uh, you got to find a better picture of Chuck's. The, Chuck's uh, <laughs> they look like the same person. They're very, yes, Those boobs are is, so big. That is a type. Yeah. I love right. the hair, though. I'm a Fox. big fan of the hair. We'll find you. We, you got to picture her after she went in the ocean, I think. You got to. Oh, you, God. You gotta, <laughs> <laughs> to the ocean. <laughs> she, she was Playmate December of 68. Cynthia Myers. Oh, 68. Oh, same year? Yeah. yeah. yeah December 68. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, then that's dead nuts on. Yeah, we'll find, uh, we'll find, uh, I don't know, picture her from the movie? That's yeah, not... yeah, we're sworn through. <clears throat> All right. Let me tell you guys about uh, Solo Stove. Nothing like gathering around the fire on a cool evening. Smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more memorable. And right now. You can get a great deal on solo stove fire pits. These things are great. They're stainless steel. They're constructed in a very quality, highly engineered way. It's uh, They work amazingly. I've had one for years now. Made with premium grade three or four stainless steel and a 360-degree airflow system that maximizes efficiency while minimizing the smoke. Easy to light with just a few bits of starter. Perfectly portable. Take Solo Stove with you on your camping trips and more. 
it really is nice for the cold evenings and it's nice for uh, the outdoor camping backyard. It is solo stove, right, Dawson? Shop now and get up to 30% off fire pits all month long and use promo code Adam at checkout to get an extra $20 off plus a lifetime warranty and free 30 day returns. Just go to solostove.com and remember you get $20 off when you use promo code Adam. All right. Find that picture yet, Max Spanner? Yeah, they're putting it up. All right. Let's see. Chuck Heston's girlfriend from 3978. Oh, wow. Oh, let's see. And, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Max Spanner. That's good. That's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. And her hair is like so conditioned, too. Like if they were out in the wilderness, like, her I mean, silky. so the, silky and shiny. Uh, they're just both from 1968. That's what I'm saying. You're going to make a <laughs> fucking movie that's 4,000 years in the future. You're going to have to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Look at those boobs. Nice. I know. That's that's the whole reason we got here. <laughs> Comedian, actor Godfrey is going to join us right after this. That laugh was from the Uncola guy who's the Bond <laughs> villain from the 7-Up commercial. Yeah, that was Joffrey yeah. Holder was his name. That uh, was his name? Joffrey Holder. Was he, he was, Nigerian? No, he is Caribbean. And he was a dancer in the 60s, you know, like Alvin Ailey and... And I would see him, because I still live in New York City, and I would see him walking as an older man. He was like six, seven. He'd go, the Uncola. The he was a giant. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, the yeah. Uncola. Joffrey Holder was, and that he he was in my favorite Bond movie, the voodoo one. Yeah. He was this creepy voodoo guy. Live yeah. and Let Die? Uh, was that Live and Let I, Die? I can't remember. They, it was the whole African funeral, funeral scene yes. in uh, New Orleans. Yes, it was all that voodoo stuff, and he was like the guy in the in the black and in, in the painted face and dancing mm-hmm. and scary. He was it was it was one of my favorite ones. Um, yeah. So all right, let's go Nigerian for a second. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. I don't know if people know it, but Nigerians kick ass in this country. Like as uh, as, academically, a, as a all group, kinds of they yeah. are fucking kicking ass. Yeah, we do bad. this thing all the time. We go African Americans <laughs> make half as much, and not the Nigerian ones. Yeah, we're a whole. It's another level. Nigerians like academics is like the first thing. Like for real. Like my father was an educator for forty something years in Chicago, and it was like. We never, it's like my, me, my brother, my sister had perfect attendance in school. We all, you know, we were, you know, you're smart. It's just education is the first thing. They don't give a damn about anything else. Education, education, education. That's why Nigerians lead in education in America. As far as like science and and mathematics have the highest degrees in America and over overseas is Nigerians. And anybody can dispute me. I don't give a shit. (laughs) Yeah, because I have, I have proof. One, uh, there's a 10 year old chess champion that's Nigerian, kick it ass. There's another Nigerian girl that's won the world math co- competition. She beat everybody. Then there's a there was a 30 year 30 year math problem that was solved by a Nigerian kid in his first semester of college. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there's a di- Nigerian guy who's a double doctor. He's like a kidney doctor and a heart specialist. He's the only one in the world. The highest robotic engineer is 28 year old Nigerian kid. <gasps> Uh, yeah, and then we play lately? sports pretty good because you got Milwaukee Bucks that's led by a Nigerian. Giannis, he's Nigerian. And yeah, we do you know sports good too, but academics is always first. Any Nigerian, even if he's an athlete, he's probably an engineer, an engineer too. Right. Christian Akoye. Yeah. Christian Nigerian Akoye. nightmare. Christian Akoye, the Nigerian. Christian Akoye, who was a, he went to Azuzu Pacific? Yeah. Azusa Pacific. Azusa Pacific. Yeah, he went to Azusa Ran Pacific. Ran track. Ran track and field. Yeah, Nigerian mm-hmm. nightmare. Kakim Olajuwon. Uh, Kim Olajuwon, dream. and I've been friends with Shaq forever, and Shaq, I always used to tell Shaq, like when we were sitting around, I, I I played basketball with Shaq, just fucking around. Can I curse? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. I don't, I don't know, Adam. Can now. I, <laughs> so he'd be like, I, and we'd be talking, i go, so who do you think, because he would tell me the pussies in the NBA. He'd be like, yo, he's pussy, he's pussy, I don't respect him. I said, who did you respect the most? He goes, Kim Olajuwon. I said, why? I couldn't stick him. His footwork was too, he's like, his footwork was too, just, he had the best footwork. Wasn't he a soccer player? Like because I told, I told Shaq it's because of soccer. Because <laughs> mm. that's our yeah. first sport. Nigerians right. are really good at the soccer. Jody, you do footwork. 20 minutes on Nigeria. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> spread it out. No, well, I think, but I have, I have thoughts. And then first yes. off, uh, you know, a couple of thoughts, which yes, is, you know, let's say, Nigerians may be the ultimate 
race. I mean, I'm going to hustle here. I think but so. I mean, you know, <laughs> Japanese are fine if you you, you, know, you need a phone. Are you Japanese? No, but no. The, oh, yeah, the just, Japanese no, night. No, but the Japanese <laughs> night guy's not going to fucking push Shaq around in the paint. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? By and large. By and large. You guys are winning the spelling bees and yeah. you're fucking yeah. squatting 700 pounds. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, yeah. There's a and lot the of. And brothers over there with Jesse <laughs> yeah. Smollett. Do you see yeah, the build I know on them. those guys? I know them. That's what's <laughs> funny. Yeah. I know. I just talked to a guy the other day because when it happened, because they're from Chicago. So when I went to visit Chicago, I do Chicago improv. I go down to the north side because I grew up on the north side of Chicago, like Wrigleyville. I'm. Rick Cubs, I grew up in Cubs. My high school's down the street from the Wrigley Field. Lang Tech, respect to Lang Tech High School. Anyway, um, so I was at this arcade. You know they have a lot of new, these, these arcade bar things now where they bring in the old arcade games. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. oh those are so Yeah, great. so there's one in Chicago way. called Emporium. So these dudes, Nigerian goes, are they're the bouncers there. They're young dudes, and I'm like, and I know them. I'm like, hey, and they know me. I was like, hey, what's up, Nigeria? Oh, cool, cool. We go to a Nigerian festival the next day, boom, boom. Then, a year later, this shit happens. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, and here are the guys that helped them do it. I go, damn, I know those guys. Yeah. Wow. I know them. Like, know them. I just talked to the, the shorter one the other day, and I said, I couldn't believe it was you. And I, don't want to say I know all Nigerians, but I go, God damn, I know them. <laughs> I know them very well. But they're doing fine now. They're doing fine now. But yeah, I know those guys. Tough couple of years. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I said, I, the I, Nigeria Festival. Yes. They serve booze? Yes, they have. It's um, The Nigerians love to drink Guinness and um, uh, what is the other one? Not Bex, but the other one. Harp? Heineken. Uh, Heineken. Guinness is, our, is a Nigerian like staple, and Guinness is an Irish drink. But it's Guinness. I grew up around it. My father loved Guinness. Guinness Stout is like a Nigerian staple. Is this a British wow. colony thing? Like, was it well, big? Well, yeah. Britain, uh, Britain colonized Nigeria. Nigeria, we were free in 1960, October 1st. You know, um, but for some reason, Guinness, which is an Irish drink, but the flags look similar. Irish is Ooh. green, orange, green, and we're green, white, green. I don't when know. When you've had a lot of Guinness, they all look the same. They all look yeah. the same, you <laughs> fucking bastard. Well, you're Nigerian, aren't you? You get a fucking accent, too. <laughs> hey, Chris, find out how Nigerians are doing in this country. I, no. Google I don't, that phrase. Don't, find out. Don't lick I your, need you to find your, out. Your finger. I'm just we talking, are the best. I'm talking about income. I'm just talking about income because they're kicking the shit out of the honkies. I can tell you that right now. Wow, you went old school honky. Yeah. I heard that in so long. Because now they're, the they're focused is on education. What's the, yeah. what's the preferred nomenclature these days? Bobo? What are we going No, with it's, it, you know, peck of wood okay. oh, and really? cracker. But we it, those roll. are weak. We're trying oh. to find new ones. <laughs> We're, I like pick, pick I have what linguists and, 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 and different, uh, le, you know, lexicographers, right? Those mm-hmm. are dictionary makers. Mm-hmm. Alexa Jeez, Carter Nigerian, for dictionaries. Oh, God, yeah. I'm a big time. No, I love dictionaries. I love dictionaries. Like, my father got me nice dictionaries. So, mm-hmm. American heritage is the best. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we're trying to find better racial slurs for white people because you guys got good ones for everybody else. Yeah. I give you credit. You're so creative. Well, on the to, hatred to be, tip. All right, but to be fair, <laughs> hundreds of years. You're, fa- you're, fa- reason, you're so good. The reason our stuff is so effective, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll bring it out of the racial okay. area for a second. Let's just bring it to a woman. Yeah. If you didn't freak out every time I called you a cunt, eventually I would walk away. Yeah. But I know it's so fucking powerful right. yes. for you. Right. I no. actually don't mind you that. You gave word. it to me. I don't mind you know that. What I, mean? I agree. Smart, I understand smart, smart well, if you're in Europe, yeah. cunt is normal. Yes, you're it cunt. Is. You're fucking yeah, cunt. You're a cunt. But here's like cunt. Ooh. Well, as a comedian, yes, you. you hear, you know what I mean, other comics from other countries using cunt just like the way we yeah, use fuck. Cunt, yeah. right, yes. right. Cracker yes. would be good if we all lost our minds. You don't, lo- you don't lose don't your care. mind because I think it's your positioning, too. You're, you're running shit. So yeah. when they go, you're cracker, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. You don't lose property. You don't lose bank loans. Yeah. You don't lose. Now, if I say cracker, oh, I've lost everything. Ah! But it's crackers corny. It's like mm, honky, really. It's quaint. It's bad. But you, you know, the N word is like the top dog. We're like the Nike of hatred, yeah, dude. That's true. We're, we're the Nike. You know, you got oh, yeah. Latinos are like Adidas. 
<laughs> the Asians are like, you know, Reebok <laughs> as far as racial slurs. Because because all of them that get called names, they call us that name, uh, too, yeah. when mm-hmm. they feel yeah. up to it. And then you got people calling each other the N-word True. because they want to be cool. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so crazy because it's contextual. Sometimes they'll use it like when they're mad at us to go, you fucking blah, blah, blah. But then they go, yo, my nigga. Yeah. Yo, yo, man. Uh, it, to, be, to be. Oh, you know. To have a cool. Like, I tell you one spirit. thing as a white guy. Yeah. And I don't I don't speak for all of them. But most. Okay. I speak for most <laughs> white guys. Almost all. Uh, I would like us yeah. to have a cracker. Uh, with an A and, and, a, hard and a cracker with a hard R, 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 and then I could explain. Yeah. That's the, our word. You want to use, yeah, that's ours. And if you want to okay. use the A, then that's a term okay. of endearment. But, but if I hit the R, it, cracker. Mm. No, if, <laughs> cracker. If I put the R, it wouldn't even affect you. It's like, it's like force it's kind field. Of hot. Big, it's, it's hot a little bit. Cracker. <laughs> you fuck. Crack, <laughs> nah, nothing. Yeah, but but anything with the and it's something about that double G, baby. Ooh, baby. Mm. I remember when I would. I wouldn't even. By the way, <laughs> if I ever go to the uh, Nigerian uh, festival That's with what, you, yeah, and I pound a few Guinness. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to talk because uh, someone's going to call me and go, "Where are you?" And I'm going to look up at the sign. And please, and, and I say, that, it's, uh, and I'll say, Adam, it's one G. No, and it's go, one G, and the G is soft. And Asenay brothers are around me, and, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm up with the uh, goddamn. I, I pounded so many so Guinness. Slaps the phone out of your hand. <laughs> I'll say, dude, the G is soft, bro. The I can't read the soft. sign. Let me just yeah, look you're around. Right. <laughs> Well, it appears. And the, and the fucked up thing about it is that the spelling of it doesn't make it any better either. Mm-hmm. Because you have Niger, mm-hmm. right? River Niger. Yep. And you got Nigeria, and which Nigeria came, the word came from Niger. It was called the Niger area. And that's where Nigeria came from. So he was like, this is the Niger area. Yeah, it's very... A lot of crazy stuff. But that word doesn't do any good if you see somebody, you know, maybe from the South. I like to use Southern voices. That reminds me of racism the most, even though racism is everywhere. But just, just, oh, man, look at this right here. That looks like, well, I, I expect it to be that. <laughs> the, is it the Niger area or the, hmm, the hard to yourself, G? There used to be a commentator. Uh-huh. He used to pop up on Bill Maher, politically mm-hmm. correct, uh-huh. incorrect, or politically correct, and all those shows all the time. And I don't know what happened to him, but his mm-hmm. name was Niger, Niger Ennis. Ennis. And I was like, I know oh, Niger yeah. Ennis. You're Excuse a couple me. of mispronunciations yeah. of away from a really I, hard name. I have name. to tell you about Niger Ennis. Shout out to Niger. Is he, is he gone? I, do, I he haven't. Pass? No. I don't he, know he's, if he's, he's, he's 54. Not. Okay, because okay. Niger. You know, if you know about the Comedy Cellar, I know you know about the Comedy Cellar in New York. He came all the time because his father, um, Roy Ennis, who was a civil rights leader, used to come and watch our shows. Roy Ennis is the guy that choked the dude up on the Geraldo show. He choked up the Klan guy. Oh, Oh, really? That black dude that stood up and started choking. That's Roy's dad. No, that's Niger's dad. Niger's dad. dad. That's Niger's dad. Roy Ennis. Oh, my God. Choked him up. Nice. And I meet, I end up meeting Roy Ennis. I become one of his favorite comedians, and I read about him in college as far as civil wow. rights people. I have a book with his dad in it. I mean, him, Malcolm X, all these great people. And then I'm in New York, and I meet Roy Ennis, who goes, you're one of my favorite comedians. Blah, blah, blah. I go, holy shit, I used to read about you. And so he would come to see this man named Menachem Dorman. Who owned the Comedy Cellar? Mm. Who passed away? Because he was this. Is, this is crazy. He was on the core uh, uh, committee for civil rights. Okay. So we would go to a ce- Martin Luther King celebration every year. He would bring. It would be me, Patrice O'Neill. It'd be Jim Norton. All of us would go to this celebration in doubt in New York, and we met. I met Laura Bush, Hank Aaron, oh, and it'd be just a. Just a medley of different celebrities celebrating Martin Luther King. That's how I knew Roy. And then Niger would come mm-hmm. to the shows talking his political shit. And he's very like, yeah, and very, you know, very I don't showy. Know why he's not? I, yeah, he doesn't he appear now? to be on the scene. He was a something in that world. He oh, was around, did and he get, just kind of did he get me too? Or something? I don't know. N- Niger was a very charismatic guy, just very smart, and I don't know where he's been. Well. 
All right, so I know you you have a hot take on every human being that comes out of my mouth. Uh, so I was thinking about famous Hungarian actress Hannah Shigula the other day. I know Hannah. Hannah. Let me tell you about Hannah. Let me tell you about Hannah. No. <laughs> Nigerians make uh, 61 in change a year, 61K in this country, and Whitey makes 57K yeah! in this, this country. Yeah! Uh, so here's the median Woo! U.S. household income. Uh, this Go, as of 2014. And I bet the groups are doing even better now. Indian, number one, that's 100K. Yeah. Taiwanese, number two. Filipino, there you go, Chris. Yeah. He's Although, dragging it down. You're dragging that yeah, curve. Yeah. In the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese, yeah. Chinese, yeah. Lebanese, look Iranian. At, look at these. Turkish, Portuguese, Palestinian, wow. Pakistani, yeah. Pakistani, wow. Indonesian, Nigerian, Syrian, Egyptian. Wow. I don't even know what that one is. Which one? Guyanese, Vietnamese, Vietnamese oh, Guyanese Korea. Is, is Caribbean. White is underneath all those oh. people. White. So, and it's the, it's nice we, to see you guys at the bottom of the list. Well, we're, no. But you're still oh, no. running shit. Hold That's on weird. a second. So Hold weird. on. <laughs> it's really weird. There's more lists. There's more. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh I thought you were at the bottom. The oh, oh, roll it. <laughs> Where are the Mexicans? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta dig. <laughs> white no, is, but I like how they just put white. white they put Irish, yes. American. Dude. They just go white, right? right. But the man. That's what the man at the, the bottom. The point is, is you come here, you study your ass off, and you'll land on your feet like the Nigerians did. Well, and you, do. you know, if, if that's what my my father used to, because I mean, you know, Chicago is the most segregated city still to today, and. Uh, my, you know, I I remember going to a really racist high school. Oh, really? But oh, that, it wasn't called that, was it? It, it was, was called, called a really yeah, racist yeah. high school. It was <laughs> called Saint Racist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was, <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was Saint. I remember it was because in in the neighborhood I lived in in Chicago, it's called Uptown. It, it's like the Guinness Book of World Record for the most like immigrants because all my friends were immigrants in Uptown Chicago, and you're talking about segregated, but in Uptown, it's like. It's like my friends were Vietnamese, Chinese, Cambodian, Laos. All doing Nigerian. better than Whitey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There were whites there. A Jewish, American Jewish, uh, Nigerian, Indian, um, African American, Haitian. So it was all my friends were from Yugoslavia when you was Yugoslavia. Yugoslavian, Russian, Polish, because we have the most Polish people in Chicago. You know, we have the most outside of Warsaw, Polish. And yeah, so all my friends were from all of that shit. Then I, half hour away, I go to a high school, all white, and they're calling you the N word. You're like, what is going on here? Oh yeah, just 30, 25 Why'd minutes away. Why'd you go to the other high school? Yeah. My because my sister away. went to that one, which was weird. And then my father thought it was good. You know, my father's an educator, so he's like, yeah, that, that's that's a good school. We go there, Catholic school. But and then I got out of there. Transferred out of there. You know, I was getting t taught by racist nuns, which was fucking me up. Oh. Because my parents are Episcopalian. That's right. That's second string Catholic. You know that. Mm -hmm. Episcopalian. We don't get the chip. Mm -hmm. We don't get the chip. And that's how I found out that we were Episcopalian. Because I wanted to go up. My Catholic friends were going up to get the little you want chip. The Eucharist, and anyway. I was like getting yeah. the Eucharist. I wanted to go up. My father's like, no. I said, what do you mean? I've earned my fucking chip. You know? He goes, no, we're Episcopalian. I said, well, you need to fucking switch. <laughs> Because <laughs> I need that chip right there, you know what I mean? I didn't say it like that to my dad. Yo, not me. I need a. I didn't Wu Tang the shit, but <laughs> so I got called. It was very racist, and it was me and another like two other black dudes in different class. I played baseball. I was like, I think was I only? It was two black dudes on the baseball team. I was a shortstop. I was fast, so I can. I'm pretty good. Could pretty good baseball player, but and then I had a, another friend in my honors English class named Larry Buhai, Filipino dude. He wanted to be white so badly, dude. He wanted to be accepted. I'm telling you. And I remember them calling him the N-word, but it's the other word, N-I-P. Mm. Oh. They, they called him. Yep. And, yep. and I was yep. like, wow, what is that? And I didn't. I never heard that one. And he goes, oh, that's that's for Asian. I go, but that's from the word Nippon, which is right. Japanese. Yeah. Why are they using it on a Filipino they don't guy? Just stay, don't yeah. Just so I, this is English. Really honors me. English class. We're oh both getting God. called racial slurs. And my teacher is black. Mrs. Scarborough and that bitch hated me because then but then when I look back I go she was probably going through hell with her faculty. Oh my god. Let, let me tell so, you yeah. from as a as a white man. Yes, please. 
First off, Asians, they all went in one big hamper. I didn't know the fucking one difference between chi- Chinese. Okay. Oh, Crystal vase. I got laundry. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Laundry. The point is, is, I didn't know the difference between Japanese food and Chinese food until I was 31. Wow. Like, it was just... Asian. Asian. Oh, just okay, gotcha. Rice, ching chong, just, you know, that's all it was. It we went, ching chong the shit out of Asian oh, people. Oh, yeah. Ching chong. And now they're running everything. That's right. Everything's made in China now. You know what you, you saw up until recently? What? Very, very late in the game. The In the aisle in the grocery store that had, like, the Chinese food, the Japanese oh. food, the ethnic it was oh, the, uh, oh, they switched the, the words aisle, up on yes. the ethnic, yeah. no, but, the no, it was Hispanic. Recently, yeah, they, uh, it's just a lot. Of, a long time. Did you work with uh, Dixon and Mike August, man, James? Man, Bader, let Dixon. me tell you something. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you That's something. That's my agent. Well, there's oh, Mike oh, August and well, hold on. Baby Doll Dixon. I was watching the Carol Shelby doc, mm-hmm. which was fantastic because I'm a big doc head. So I was like, ooh, the Shelby. I love the Shelby. The GT. I want to watch that. So I watched that. Then I watched Willie T. Ribs. Knew about Willie T. Ribs in college because I read about him and the Cosby supporting and the whole nine. Knew about, I'm big into African American history. So, and I know about Wendell Scott, first African American mm-hmm. stock car stock racer. Car guy. Mm-hmm. Richard Pryor played him in Grease Lightning, mm-hmm. one of my favorite movies. And so I'm like, yo, I see the credits. I go, fuck, Adam Carolla did this shit. I was like, wow, this is good shit. Willie T. Ribs, he did Willie T. Ribs. Damn. Then I see Mike August. I go, fuck, I only know one Mike August. <laughs> I say, like, that was my first agent in 97 mm. at William Morris. Mike August, James Dixon, Conan Smith, Raul Mateo. That was my crew. And Brian Stern. I was hanging out with Willie T. Ribs last weekend. Get the hell. Why is his last name Ribs? It was weird. Because it's, it's a black weird. dude and I go, his name really Ribs? Yeah. God damn. I mean, and he's how is that? He, he's fantastic, man. What a heroic. Uh, there's a picture of it somewhere. I don't know, Chris. Man, I would love oh, to meet that I guy. went out to dinner with him for three hours. Was uh, it good? One week ago. Was it good? Oh, it's always good. He's, he's, uh, well, he's a, he's, all right. He's okay. one of these guys. He's got an energy yes. to him, you know? So yeah. some uh, people are like pets, you know, some dogs are, you know, they run around. They got another, like, you know, lay around, you know, and they're just, pe- people have, and they, people have their own metronome, you know what I mean? Right. So yeah. he's got that metronome, like right. he's got the energy. Then he's, you know, super into everything. His son, Theo, is a professional skeet shooter. Damn. And, wow. and he's well, all in, up into in that. Well, hip-hop, that's kind of gross. Say, so go ahead. Yeah. Ske- <laughs> and when you, when you go out to, with us at the racetrack from wow. uh, last weekend, but when you go out to a <sighs> dinner with uh, Willie T, it's a, it's a three-hour dinner, and he's telling you every fucking story, and he knows <laughs> everyone, and everyone loves him, and uh, he, he brings it. He wears cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, and he, you know, he lives earned that. He earned that look. Great. He's yeah. earned that look. And he's he's fucking Willie T. Ribs. I mean, that's who he is. He loves uh, me because I made the doc yeah, on him, uh, so. Yeah. You brought yeah. him back into the light. Man. Oh, he's he's now like the ambassador for Formula One in Europe. What? Like, his fucking phone rings off the hook because everyone wow. wants the guy with the story. I mean, you know. You're like, like looking you know for Sugar Man. Are. You're not like looking for yeah. Sugar yeah. Man. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, what yeah. you did for him. Yeah, That's he was kind of lost to history, and then yeah. they did this doc, and then everyone loved the yeah. doc, and now they all want some diversity and some history. See what so the they... white man does for people sometimes. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes it's not always black people, man. It's you. We paid. Ah. Now he's getting paid, and he's showing up. He was at the race I was doing because they made him the grand marshal of the race, which Aww. he wouldn't have uh, done before the doc. I've That's never awesome. been to a race car. Uh, I've never been to Indy, none of that shit. I want to go. It's fun. Is it fun? Just say you're willing yeah. to your ribs and show up. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. We'll let you in. I heard it's amazing. <laughs> it, it's, is, it, is it amazing or is it is I, it as exciting as it is? Or are you just used to it and you don't give a shit anymore? Uh, I was driving the car, so I wasn't, oh, you drive? wasn't a participant. I wasn't a spectator. Yeah. Damn. Well, I crashed the car. It's a long okay. story. But, <laughs> but you didn't drive it long. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, wow. I didn't drive it too long. But that's, it was, that's my connection. It Mike was, August. Yeah. And uh, Mike still, Mike works with us. We talk to him every every day. He's still Mike. Augie. Where is he? He lives in, where is he He's in OC. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. James Dixon. James Dixon was the reason why I, he, I remember James was like, a little cigarette. He goes, Godfrey, listen, you got to close the fucking door on Chicago. Move your ass to New York. I remember that. Yeah. And that's, and that's when I moved. Yeah, he goes, come on. He's like very like 
Retro. Mike got you on to Cosby. Is that true? Yeah, Mike. It, it, I was audience coordinator for Cosby. He goes, yo, I got a little gig. Um, they're interested in you. I think they, um, yeah, you Cosby. I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I'm coming from Chicago, four years in, five years in comedy. I'm like, all right, it's Cosby. Why not? And it's, you know, you're just warming up the crowd, two, 300 people for eight hours. That's a job and a half. Fuck. And so that's why I'm on the Cosby documentary. Let's talk about Cosby that Kamal Bell uh, produced. And he called me the month of the par- of the pandemic, March 2020, like a week or about 10 days before the pandemic hit. I shot in Brooklyn. He goes, hey, man, I need you. I know you work for Cosby. I need you to be in this documentary. And we're going in on him. I said, all right, fuck it. And I, I'm all over that shit. You, did you have experiences with Cosby? Nah, not not some. I never seen him do anything crazy. Never seen him do. He was always cool, just cool. I was there when his son was murdered. I was around. You I know, was I, living I in had Queens. such a weird, eerie story with that son is yes. murdered in like yeah. nineteen ninety six or seven. It was or like ninety five, ninety eight, ninety seven, ninety eight. I don't think it was that late. I think it was mm-hmm. like ninety six, ninety seven, because I was like driving. Oh, it was ninety seven. All right. Oh, January 97. All right. So yeah. very early 97. Yeah. I was, I drove right past the murder site. Oh, what? Yeah. On that oh. hill? On the- yeah, because I was working Loveline, Loveline radio show that mm-hmm. was in Culver City. Mm-hmm. I was living in an apartment in Toluca Lake. And the way you would get home, especially with no traffic, just go over the 405. Right. Yeah. And I'm going over the 405 and I'm passing under Skirball or Mulholland or yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah, he was go. killed right up there. <laughs> and Love Line ended at midnight. So I'm driving past there, 1215, 1220, 12 whatever. 01. He's he, I'm out fast, <laughs> but he, like he's killed it somewhere around that time, oh, right wow. up. That's literally oh, just on God. the off ramp, right, right above me. Jeez. Yeah, well, that was uh, yeah, that I was, was crazy. And he came out. I remember, like I remember that day because I walked because I was in Kaufman Astoria. It was Kaufman Astoria Studios. I was living in Long Island City, Queens, and I could walk. And I and I remember because it's right next. It, Cosby Show is right next door to Sesame Street. So if you ever wanted to answer that question, <laughs> can right. you tell me how? Okay. So, <laughs> damn, I had to go there, but. uh yeah, so I walked in and it was, I was like, yo, where's Dr. Cosby? He said, oh, he has an emergency to take care of. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. All right. So I just went back home and turned on TV and it was that. Oh. And then the, he came back the next week and did a whole fucking oh my God. stand-up routine on the burial. Jesus. Oh, oh really? My God. I had to stand there and watch him kill and make people cry. And then he tossed the mic to me and I had to give it up for Dr. Cosby. <laughs> wow. Oh, Holy yeah. Shit. That was incredible wow. shit. I mean, he was he was genius. Other than all this other shit, no, he's a genius. Master, yep. master class. I was watching for six months. A master class. It was him. It was the it was the CBS Cosby, not the original one. It was, uh-huh. the, it was the one with Madeline Kahn. To see Madeline Kahn's genius, I was like, it was like, man, I was like, I'm in, underrated. Underrated. Yeah. I was in heaven. She was the nicest lady to me, and I was like, you know, as you're a warm up, no one gives a fuck about you. And Cosby was cool. I remember. So he would come out in front of the audience and do a little work. When, when, when he you. did that for his son, but here's what's funny: he never would come out. But then, I was doing really well as the warm up. I would, I was just, and you couldn't do. There was no singing songs. You know how you go to places and there, I yep. couldn't throw no t-shirts. They were like, you have to be clean. You can answer yep. questions, and you just gotta come up with shit. So I would come up with clean shit, and I remember imitating him. <laughs> and I'm and I'm turned Bold around. Move. <laughs> I just I just was doing it. I just was doing Cosby. Something made me do it. I was like, you see, because people have to understand that we are here and representing the people. And and all of a sudden, I'm getting a big ass laugh. Right? I'm thinking, <laughs> damn, I'm killing <laughs> that fucker's right behind me. And he's standing there. And I turn. Everyone's like, ah. He's like, I do not talk like that. Why are you imitating me? <laughs> and I said, Yes, you do, sir. And boom. Place went. Ex- By the way, there's almost no difference when you just did that. Yeah, so. I couldn't right. even tell. You were right. So I'm gonna close my eyes. Do it again. <laughs> okay. Adam Carolla, I just want to say, who is the dude that is on your show? I right, see. I don't know if that's the Godfrey Cosby or Cosby. <laughs> that's Cosby. how good I am. That's God how good he is. And that's and he started coming out after that. I was and 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 one of the producers say, uh, Dr. Cosby wants to come and do some time." 
because he saw me getting laughs. Nah. I was doing really because I was I didn't want to get fired, so right. I would just be telling jokes, running them, and then all of a sudden, Cosby. They say, yeah, Cosby wants to do a set, and I had to watch him murder <sighs> in front of me, and then he would go like this, follow that. Wow! And I was so happy. I go, I brought your punk ass out. It, it's, I brought you out. I'm, I'm only four or five years, and he would be challenging me, and I'm like, this is amazing. It is so interesting when yeah. you hear about, we've talked about race car drivers and yeah. Senna and how the go car competitions and how, how the competitive they are. And the, here's, you know, you're nobody. He's Cosby. <laughs> right. he's, no, it's true. He's, he's raking yeah. in millions and blah, 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 Coca-Cola <laughs> and Kodak and Jello and everything else. But he, Stan, when he sees you... Yep. Some little, some little spark inside yep. him that transcends the cars and the penthouse and everything. He's just, oh, he's back. Yeah. He's on yeah. a schoolyard. Yes. He's 19 again. Yeah. It's time to scrap. Yeah. You know? That's what he did. He goes, and he would go like this. He would do that. They point at you. Yeah. And I remember coming into his office, just ask him a little advice because you could just walk in. He was cool and he had his cigar. It was Cosby-esque. He had a cigar, and I walk in. I say, hey, Dr. Cosby, just wanted to ask you a question. He goes, yeah, how you doing? Which is what do you want to talk about? And I said, uh, uh, just, you know, advice and comedy. I just want to, just because it's Cosby. And I remember, oh, this was so great. He goes, he puts his, he has a cigar. He goes, writing. <laughs> you have to put it on the paper. That's, I remember, he goes, you see, when you write, it is the backbone of what you're doing. And I say, yeah, well, I've only been doing comedy four or five years. He goes, you know Sinbad? He knocks it out the park. <laughs> he knocks it out the park. And I go, oh, okay, cool. I love Sinbad. Sinbad's one of my big brothers. I get great. And he goes, see, and I say, sometimes I have a joke, you know, here. I'm just trying to, like, just come up with shit because I want to stay in his office. I go, I sometimes I have a joke here and it doesn't really match. He goes, you see, <laughs> comedy is like the ABCs mixed up. See, as you keep going, you're going to have the A, then the B's going to come, then everything is going I'm not, I wish I was, someone else was with me, my friends were with me. And he was like, you got to put it so it's like it's going to come, but it's going to, he did, it was that. He did all that. Wow. You know, it is funny. Yeah. A true Willie T does a really funny Cosby. Does he, really? Willie T. <laughs> he does. I don't know if it's anywhere on the internet, but he does one. Oh, I would love to great. see that. Yeah. All right. Let yes. me hit uh, Keeps here. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Keeps, a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months in discreet packaging. Low cost starts at just 10 bucks per month. Treatment plans are typically half the cost of the pharmacy prices. Proven results, Keeps has more five-star reviews than its competitors. And you can check out the before and after photos on their website. Remember, prevention is key. Treatment can take Four to six months to see results. So act fast and keep your hair with Keeps. Right, Dawson? If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Adam to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash Adam to get your first month free. keeps.com slash Adam. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with Jody Miller and Godfrey and the news right after this. It's time for the news with Jody Miller. Woo! Hey guys. All right. So I kind of teased this in the beginning of the show, and I'm bringing it all full circle right now. Deborah Hodge over in London married her cat to get around her landlord's pet restriction. This mm. is a thing now. Mm. This is a thing now. A fed up 49 year old woman. Woohoo! Uh, she devised a plan to marry her cat after already rehoming three previous pets due to the landlords who reject them. Now, first of all, why are you even looking for a place that says no pets? That's my first thing. And I'm a cat lover. But don't you think that's a little on her or no? Yeah. Look, if you own an apartment building, you're allowed to have rules. Right, of course. And then there, if you make those rules, then there'll be other entrepreneurial right. building owners who want you to get want to get your business. So they'll yeah. be pet friendly. Right, and of course. That's, that's right. the way the system works. Exactly. So but this woman just obviously wanted to live here. So she decided to marry her cat. So what? she could <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, so man. she could live in this apartment building. Is and now right? it is, is a legal. 
She is white. Okay, I just just want to know. I'm not stereotyping. And there she is. She's a single woman over 40. Uh, Not to feed into the stereotype. Mm -hmm. I am also a single woman over 40. Your cats? Yeah. Uh, Oh, I just lost my cat. He passed away. Sorry. It's okay. Um, But I have Mm -hmm. a baby, so it's, you know, same thing. Okay. so I'm not as desperate. I actually have a human. But mm-hmm. I nice. actually support this. I think, fuck that guy. That's right. Marry that cat. She married the cat. I mean, just, the cat. It's just fun. Like, she just, I mean. Somebody she, just, someone tweeted me that some <laughs> guy married like an emoji or something. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. A meta uh, At least a cat you can cuddle with. I mean, I haven't really been watching the Far death. be it for me to no sound arguments. like the religious right, but remember like, like 10 years ago and they're like, we can't let gays marry. Yes. And like, yes. Why not? Because you're going to marry your dog. That's right. right. Like, oh, get the fuck but out Adam, of here. Adam, We're here. We're Adam, here. Adam, they were right. Just they so were... you know, that cat is also a female. So oh, it's the same whoa. sex What cat. would that be? It's the same sex cat That's marriage, homo. I believe. It's homo animal and bestia. <laughs> Is that homo I don't think they've consummated the relationship. I don't okay, think they right, have. Right. I don't know. That's a, a follow up story. Yeah, that's just. What, what Chris, what did the guy do? Marry an emoji I'm, I'm, or I something? I think he married a, a hologram. A hologram. A hologram. Metaverse. Some yes, metaverse was, thing. I'm yeah. just saying, all the fire and brimstone preachers from the you know 2010. You're right. Well, listen. Turned out to be right. You're right. And mm-hmm. look, I mean, as a single girl, it's a red flag that I've never been married. So I, right here on the Adam Carolla show, I'm going to marry this water bottle. See? Oh. Is that a I red flag? Because you. you haven't been married? People I've say that it been. is. Why? Not for a guy. No, 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 no. no, no, no. But for like a, a girl. marriage is, a lot of marriages aren't great. They're, they stink. Agreed. It's fucked up and whack. But I think when a guy doesn't get married and he gets into middle age, yes. the me. assumption is... He hasn't found anyone yes. good enough for him. That's right. True. And when the women. Woman, <laughs> there's something yeah, wrong with Go ahead her. and flip the script. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, as a matter of fact, it was her you didn't want to marry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't. But that's the math I'm doing. <laughs> Because I haven't been, ever been married, middle-aged guy, and I haven't been married. I don't know. I just, mm. and nowadays, too, with the social media, everybody's on some hustle shit now. Mm-hmm. People are on some hustle shit. You get a girl with, a couple of like some followers, you can't tell the shit. Yeah, and, no. and a lot of them don't have a pot to piss in, but they play like they do. Of course, do they you do. put the Tabasco in the condom when you're done with it, like Drake? Uh, is that is that a is that a thing? Oh, is that a, oh, is that so a trick can't to take kill? That, oh, you oh get well, the no, it's considered a delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? Oh, Nigerian <laughs> 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 taco. <laughs> You want a Nigerian taco? Oh this, oh this is too spicy for you. If you want an African cuisine. <laughs> you, yeah. that, that's the scum, oh, man. man. Well, God. why'd you go there? Pause. You went there. Oh, I did? Well, you why'd there. you follow? You should have never it. followed. It's, it's, it's your show. I don't know. I follow Mix it up. Happens. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, wait, who has, you have this story? <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, let's see it. So it's a 38-year-old Japanese guy. He oh. call, it, they call him a fictosexual. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ficto. Married a hologram in 2018. See? Yes, and uh, but he's having oh. a lot of trouble oh, yeah. communicating with him now oh. because of technology. Yeah, he did. Are they in couple therapy? Is, uh, no First, the gays got to get married, and then you can uh, get right. to this. Right. If we stopped <laughs> at the gays, you couldn't hop to an emoji. So he's married to a <laughs> Yeah, it's a hologram. I don't get. I know. Does yeah. he look like he have a lot of game though? Come on, let's keep it one hundred. So wait, he's a fix sexual? Ficto. 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 Spell that. Like, Spell that. F i c t o sexual. Like attracted to fictitious, like ficto. Yeah. Like fictitious not real things. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. not real things. <clears throat> okay, fict ficto. ficto. Yeah, their wedding cost more than seventeen thousand dollars. That's the ridiculous. Fuck? And the uh, money laundering that's scheme. Insane. Yes, that's yeah. insane. So the technology no longer exists, so he's he's having trouble uh, communicating with her. But Clearly. he says, "My love for Miku, that's, mm. that's her name, hasn't changed." I held the wedding ceremony because I thought I could be with her God Can I tell you where he did save on the ceremony? The two plates for his parents who killed themselves when they got the invite. <laughs> Definitely saved on the field. I know the Japanese culture. Your kid gets a C and trick, you kill yourself. Marries a fucking... Oh, oh, oh. Stuff, Hari Kari? Marries a, a stuffed animal. You're done. <laughs> Is that him holding? Okay, that's her in the th- thing. That's yeah. the hologram, yeah, and then so he's got, yeah. He was reportedly oh bullied God. at work and fell into, no. into a depression in 2008. <laughs> and that's when he first stumbled you mean the upon other guys Miku. at the logging camp didn't understand? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude. Yo, that's, that's Is that sad. their wedding photo? Like, Come that's on, a terrible man. shot, too. He's, I don't know. No one looks happy. And this is in Japan. It's now wide open. 
It's wow. now. It's now. People are gonna they're yeah, marrying cats so and figurines, cats and, and everything. So it, it's on and pillows. It's well, on. at least you can fuck a pillow. It's on. That's right. A pillow won't talk Wait a minute, back. What, are they <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? I don't know. Uh, all right, just you know, changing lanes. Yes. Elizabeth Warren says that Elon Musk is a threat to our democracy. She tweeted this week that allowing Elon Musk to buy Twitter, which I think is hilarious, <laughs> is giving him the power to decide how millions of people can communicate with each other. It's dangerous for our democracy. Elizabeth um, Warren. Yeah. It's always. It, I liked her. It's always. Yeah. <laughs> She's know. awesome. She pretended to be fucking Indian so she could get a <laughs> faculty job at a college. No one gives a fuck. Did she do then, that? Oh, then she got oh. a DNA test and turned out to be less Indian than, than oh, I am Nigerian. <laughs> but that's all right. Just, just uh, culturally appropriate uh, she really another tried culture. To do that? Oh, oh, she's so fucking full of shit. And she, okay. she doesn't make money. She fucking takes money. And Elon makes money. Not everyone who pays a shitload in taxes oh. is the fucking problem or the devil. Right. Please. Just and also, it's one of these things. You fucking mark my words. We do this thing now. We go, <clears throat> and you don't remember it because there's nothing. Like, remember three years ago, four years ago, they're always talking about moving the embassy in Israel to Jerusalem or something. Mm -hmm. Every, right, right. every yes. president yeah. promised it. Nobody ever did it. Right. And then at some point, Trump went, we're going to move it. And then everyone runs a fire, <laughs> fire in the Middle East, a nonstop war, nonstop war. It's never going to, it's going to, the Middle East is going to catch on fire when he does this. Then he did it. Nobody gave a shit and no one even remembers it. And right. there, nothing happened. It's going to be Trump. the exact fucking same thing with Elon Musk. Like if he takes over Twitter, if he takes over Twitter, well, call Trump me is going to come months. back without it. Elon Musk is uh, the on owner. To Twitter. Maybe Trump would be like, this is a very good buy. Wow. <laughs> That's good. Very good. Very good. I've done a lot of great things. <laughs> I'm coming back whether you like it or not. Elon Musk, very, very good businessman. She, uh, <laughs> she, apolog solid, she apologized solid. to the chief of the Cherokee Nation in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> is did. that the new trail of tears? <laughs> I did. guess. Anyway, <laughs> fuck her. Well, also, fuck. we know, Elon, we're, he's going to buy Pornhub next. Yeah, so it's already. Hell already, yeah. We've already no, decided what? that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. nice. For um, Pornhub, man. Yes, although she had nothing to say about Zuckerberg. A lot of people are pointing this up. She never says anything about him. I wonder why. Nothing. Well, they always do this thing where they go, these rich guys running these right. media outfits. Yes. Come on, it's going to take us into the ground. It's like, uh, like, like, yeah. <laughs> or uh, what's it, Bezos. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's all the rich guys run right. all the media. Of that's how, they do. That's how, that's how it works. <laughs> it's like, here's the problem. Here's what they should be saying. This rich guy who's not our rich guy wants to run this That's thing. Just exactly. go make clarify. Right. The other so. rich guy who you like, you got no problem with. This right. isn't your rich That's guy. Right. He doesn't do what you want them, but what you want him to do. Doesn't it take a rich guy to run a media? They're all rich. You can't be broken. Running. Very few media conglomerates run by not rich guys. Right. right. You yes. can't be like, man, you broke motherfucker with your fucking... You, you would just with your networks sick of his now. Right. So you have you to have the, money. You got the guy. You got you know Elon Musk and Bezos are always like swapping spots for yes. richest guy on yeah. the yeah. planet. Yeah, I think Bezos runs the Washington Times. Post. Oh, post. Oh, he got all right. Post. Oh, he has the post. Now? So you have zero problem with the guy swaps places right. for number one's rich guy in the world wow. having a media empire. Right. No problemo. But now you have a huge problem. It doesn't sound intellectually no. honest to me. Well, wow. That's all. Money, rich people problems, fuck out of here. And uh, the last story I feel like you guys can all relate to, because I feel like we all grew up with Bugs Bunny, right? We all grew up with him. And uh, wait, wait, I think I can do one, ready? Uh -huh. Oh, can you? Oh my God, please, please. Uh, what's up, Doc? Oh, that's good. Ah! That's Give me can some! Do, can you do your somebody, some. Sam? Can you do your somebody, Sam? Oh, uh, I see, I see, uh, boy. <laughs> but that's more, no, that's, that's far more in But it's the same oh. guy, Mel it Blank did the them all. Yes, what about oh, Elmer Fudd? He did uh, this is a really good show, Adam Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, right? That was, great. that was really good. Okay, okay, so Bugs Bunny is under well, fire. Let's get him into trouble. Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. no, hell no. <laughs> you ain't fucking with me. What about his cousin, the slower one? That's Baba right. Lou? Oh, God. Oh, no, so the lazy one. Fuck, fuck that. That was yeah. so bad. Well, this is, okay, so, so this racist. is what this is all about. Oh, I, when I was a kid, I was like, Mexicans are so lazy. <laughs> so lazy. They can What's fall that? asleep leaning <laughs> against a <laughs> cactus. That's how tired they are. Yes, it hurts, but no, they'll just lay there. But they're really fast. Eba, 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 eba. They're fast when they want to be. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so Bugs Bunny is under fire because everybody's going back just the way they are with comedians going back oh, to old stuff. Oh, he did Bugs, a lot of Japanese World War II. He stuff. did that. He yeah. dressed up as a woman Does frequently to get guys to fuck him. Oh, That's yeah. being brought <laughs> out. Blow the bug with Lip. a bomb. Yes, he he did. He actually there's one cartoon they're picking out where he was playing the piano mm-hmm. and somebody coughed and he pulled out a gun and shot him. Yeah, COVID, 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 stuff. COVID wow, guys. Great. There's a yeah, there's up. a lot. Of, it's 1940s, man. So there is a big uproar. Well, Tom there's Jerry needs a day. Need to Tom get me under too. fire too. Tom, All of get them. out my house. O W T. Do do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is our, who's mad about this, So though? this governor, the governor, Ron uh, DeSantis, Republican oh, over in uh, Florida, is all up in arms about Florida this. Florida is oh, mad? Oh, he's doing oh, he's, a, he's, he's anti-Disney now, but he yes. gives a fuck about uh, uh, yep, Bugs pointing, Bunny? Just pointing well, out that's that, Brother, no? just pointing out, though, that Bugs, I mean, just pointing out the stuff that Bugs used to do, dressing up oh, as a woman I again, see. you know, cross-dressing. Ah, but, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. We have to, uh, you know, there's a thing in the automotive world, mm. and I can't remember if it's 25 years, but there's there's a, a rule uh, in California, probably nationwide, or some version of it. If your car is older than 25 years of whatever the current date is, maybe it's 20 years, you don't, it doesn't have to pass like smog. Like the liquor oh, store yes. must, must be, a, be this yes. age on this date. Yeah, basically when you see the guys at Bob's Big Boy with their 55 Chevys and their hot rods on the weekend, well, that's not going to pass smog. It doesn't have a catalytic converter, but it's grandfathered. In. We need that with any fucking cartoons yeah. or yeah. racist yes, shit or homophobic shit. Like at once, whatever the date is, we can go back twenty years and then you have to cut it off. If the we, ink's, yes. if the ink's dry, so yeah, to we, speak. we can't go back to nineteen forty four and and start outing people or me tooing or whatever. It's just a cartoon. Let's, let's go comic get Mickey book. Rooney on that Japanese movie right. and, tip, and, and Breakfast for Tiffany. Don't like it, huh? Oh my god. No, it's like, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany. But something like yeah, a hothead. Yeah. What's the same dress as it? Oh yeah, so right. many people, right? Yeah, all right. So let's just whatever. The, look, we could get to 2050 when then we could just go back to now. Yes. You know, but we have to cut it off. That's we can the fu- only go yeah. back so far. It's a wow. futuristic movie we're going to make. Well, That's now right. they have on AMC or not AMC, but the um, TCM. Now they have to, you, you. They talk to you about like if you're watching Gone with the Wind, they'll say there's some characters in here mm-hmm. that were mm-hmm. depicted in a certain way. Like Whoopi Goldberg would be there. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to tell you, this is not, it's going to be kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> this is going to be very, very, very disgusting. Enjoy the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the movie. <laughs> and, and they all, Enjoy I mean, it. now we're at the point where it's like period smoking. Like oh, God, warning yeah. us that Humphrey Bogart is going to oh, smoke a cigarette in the Maltese Falcon. It's like you see a scene and... of it, and there's like a sign that comes like, smoking's bad, right. don't smoke, right in the middle of the movie. Speaking of Bogart, the African <laughs> Queen stars the two whitest people on earth. Uh, uh, of course. Yes. What about Play It Again, Sam? Yeah. Forcing a black man to oh, play sure. piano. <laughs> we we right. want to tell you he's forcing... <laughs> Against his will. So, I mean, this scene was shot before we knew we couldn't force anyone to play the piano. What mm-hmm. about Is You Is You Is You Ain't My Baby? Oh my God. That's Tom and Jerry. Where Is You Is oh, that's right. Is right, You right. Ain't My Baby. Oh, baby, baby, please don't let me down. Satchmo. A woman <laughs> is a creature that's always been strange. But then you turn around and she don't go made a change. He turned into this old black man trying to, trying to talk to this wow. chick. Playing the. <laughs> They were playing the, oh, like, yeah, dunka, the, dunka, 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 yeah, the, the, the water jug or whatever it's called. Yeah. But they did that a lot. Zoot suit stuff. And it was, what's fucked up, it was h- hilariously horrible. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. They all did it in that time. Yep. Holy shit. We the Japanese, the black thing. They would do a lot of the blackface stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Bugs you did. Know? Yeah, black. All of them did it. It was whew, rough. Uncomfortable. All right. <laughs> we're, just, I, I we're just marinating in this what, awkwardness. I, I don't get at the, you know, we just pick at our scabs. You know what I mean? We just yes. kind of look back and go, what about, what about this yeah, time? Exactly. You know, yes. when, like, it'd be like if we went out to dinner once a week and I every conversation was, my grandfather was such a dick. <laughs> 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 Fucking asshole. He was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that was every conversation. Every, every time conversation we went out to dinner, time. that's all I wanted to talk about. My grandfather. I don't want to talk it's about my asshole. plan was or what the future may hold. No, I'm talking about my grandfather. Talk about my kids. Just what a no. huge <laughs> douche my grandfather was. <laughs> Like was what? he your grandfather? No, he was a great guy. <laughs> but wouldn't it, wouldn't it get a little stale eventually? Little. Yeah. All right, let's bring it home.
Oh, do, do we have a, an outro hey, for you? I do, but All right. do I just do it? All right. Yeah, we'll I don't want to leave. Mm-hmm. Cracker. <laughs> Crack. Don't worry, Gina. Your job is safe. That was the news with Jody Miller. All right, let me give Godfrey a plug out there. In Godfrey, yeah. we trust it's available wherever you listen to Fire Gas podcast. Digital Network. Oh, where do we go? Gas Digital Network and God for your trust Tuesdays and Fridays, 10 p.m. Eastern. And this YouTube channel. I got a YouTube God, channel? Yeah, Godfrey Comedy. Instagram, Comedian Godfrey. Comedian Twitter. Godfrey. Twitter is Godfrey Comedian. And then, of course, That's Jody good. here. Yeah. She's got a show, The World's Funniest Weather. And you can check it out on local TV listings. Yep. And go to her website, Jody Miller Comedy. Dot com to find out what she's up to. And I'm going to be in Indianapolis doing shows at uh, Helium. Uh, that'll be uh, this Friday and Saturday. Can I throw By a plug the way, in? oh, I got a spot. Yeah. I can. Yeah, you got a what? When do you show this? When is this show? This on? goes up Monday, right? Yeah. Monday? Correct. Monday. Oh. Oh, Monday. This Monday? Come yeah, on. Oh, show. Vancouver. I'm at House of Comedy in Vancouver on oh, uh, May 5th through the 9th. How about. That Vancouver, yeah, is awesome, out Vancouver, by the way. yeah, Vancouver is great. I think British Jimmy's Columbia bachelor party was in Vancouver. Was oh yeah, damn awesome. <laughs> all right, let me hit my last spot. LifeLock, all uh, the identity thief needs uh, for shopping scam is your name, mailing address, email, and phone number. With that, they can start their online store account with their own shipping info. It's important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft are affecting our lives every day. We put our info at risk on the internet in an instant cyber criminals could harm your finances your credit good thing there's lifelock lifelock helps detect a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web if they detect your information has potentially been compromised they will send you an alert you'll have access to a dedicated restoration specialist if you become a victim protect yourself with lifelock right dawson no one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses but you can keep what's yours with lifelock by norton join now and save up to 25 percent off your first year with promo code adam call 1-800-lifelock or head to lifelock.com use promo code adam for 25 percent off all right so we got all the plugs in and until next time it's adam Crow for jody miller and godfrey hey and thanks Paul for having Brian. me say it mahalo Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have the mom jeans, which are just high-waisted jeans. But I literally bought these jeans. I loved them. I put them on. And then I got home, and I actually read the label. And they are actually labeled distressed mom jeans. Oh. Which I think is redundant. I mean, yeah. just say mom. mom. Like, for distressed moms? Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're actually torn a little bit, which I think represents how I feel on the inside. <laughs>